relatively close maps, not only between Optic Gaming and Complexity, but as well as FaZe and TSM. You know, the assault rifles as well as the specialist weapons really dictating a lot about what happens on this map. But yep. we're moving into the banner protect phase. And this is a dream team squad where, you know, it's not like they're bad. Their their record is pretty bad, but this is a good team. Like a lot of their games go to game five. It's yep. just they always find a way to just let it slip through their fingers when, when it gets down to time to closing the game out. Yeah, I think a lot of times you say, you know, if this team gets to game five, they're going to win. If this team gets to game five, they're going to win it. If DT let it go to game five, they're going to lose it. They're going to lose it. This is the one team that I can openly say that, say it confidently. Shiva being one of the first things banned out. They saw Clayster is not. Exactly. They do not want to have to deal with this one in this first matchup. Also, the flashbang taken out right after that. We've seen such a focus on the grenades here tonight. It looks like that same theme is occurring yet again. All right. I expect to see concussions go. Okay. Uh, high caliber is definitely going to go. Kinetic armor, that's going to go as well. You know, you see John using kinetic armor all the time. They don't want John to go off with that special yep. ability. There goes concussions. We're now we're down to our final two. High picks. caliber still HC. in. High caliber HC. I think are, are the two we're going to be seeing. HC would be a safe ban. I think that's going to be more and more of a common ban, especially in a game mode like Hardpoint when you don't want to worry about you know those uh, lethal grenades. So when you're comparing like a HCXC to like a, a frag or a Semtex, something that doesn't take up points on your class, yeah, and a lot more useful than a frag and a Semtex. Oh, most m m more than likely, yes. That's that's kind of what we're looking at here. Both players. They're calling. They want each other to ban high caliber. And, John's oh. finally going to do it. Now Chino's got a couple seconds. Whoa, the sight whoa. is actually what he goes with. A little bit more different. You got caught off guard by that one, Revan. You, you okay? You just with, saw Chino with what make they a picked? huge play with the sight. Why why yeah. would you go ahead and ban that? I mean, sure, maybe you keep it out of the hands of somebody like Saints, but Chino's certainly a player that has made big plays with the sight. He's very comfortable using that. I was expecting something more along the lines of, you know, maybe like a pure fire ban. But the sight, this is one of the first times I'm seeing it get banned out. It's certainly probably the most used specialist weapon. Curious to see how this is going to affect the game. Obviously, those positional players, they're going to be affected by the sight no longer being available. Oh, for sure. And so far, it's a mirror matchup between these two teams from what they've banned out. Heat wave and active camo on either side. Sender does grab that annihilator. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen Sender not use an annihilator in hard point this at this true. point. And Spacey will pick up Spacey. the purifier, yeah. I like that, especially for the bunker hardpoint. That's really where you're going to see these teams kind of save those specialist weapons for. Now, the question is, does LG go for another weapon with John? Do they go for another ability? His <laughs> Kinetic Armor was banned out. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and pick up the Annihilator. Fully, if Kinetic Armor was still in, uh, I definitely would have put it over to John to pick up that ability. But oh, the Annihilator, sure. not a bad pickup for him either. Not at all. So this is a matchup where you mentioned DT. <laughs> they they want to stay as far away from game five as possible. Then you look at Luminosity <laughs> where... <laughs> yes, thank you. Finally, I'm being acknowledged for who I truly am. Pablo, it's a great new name. Um, I'm hoping the farming season goes well for me this time around, yeah, unlike you, last year. Yeah, but no longer have a casting career. Exactly. So. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, there's probably executives waiting, ready to fire me because of all the hate they've received. But no, 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 no. And back to this game. Luminosity, they want to close this one out. Early. As well, because yeah. they, they they don't want to go. Neither team wants to go to a game five. But I think Luminosity they need a statement series because this DT squad just always finds a way to hang in. I mean, we joke about them never clutching up in the game five, yeah. but either way, that's such a toss up between these two teams. If I'm if I'm Luminosity, I want to end this series 3-0. I want I want a quick 3-0. I think this one both these teams are really looking for that statement win. I yeah. mean, for the most part, I think this is an even matchup, and this is certainly one that can go to a game five. Yep. But I believe both teams right now they're sitting at something like two and six. They're kind of both desperate for a win as well. Absolutely. And you mentioned that. We mentioned how who's going to take the momentum, who's going to kind of get out to an early lead. We want to hear your thoughts. Get on Twitter. Use the hashtag CWLPS4. Tweet us your thoughts at RevanJB, at CourageJD. Who do you think will win this first hardpoint map to get out to an early lead in this series? I mean, looking at these two squads, I... I I'm going with Luminosity. I'm saying they're going to go up 1-0 in this best of five. I think Luminosity is going to win this series 3-0. You know, if you compare experience between both these teams, yeah, Luminosity has way more experience than okay. the guys on Dream Team. But you can't put it past Dream Team to, I, I know you could call an upset, but pull out a win here. I think this Dream Team squad, you know, when they're playing, they're at their top level, they can be good. And they can contest consistently for, you know, a, a sixth place team, like a at least like a top eight. That's where I kind of see these guys matching up against the rest of the teams in North America. It's just they need to find a way to close out games. I mean, we were talking about last time we saw them on stream. Uh, I think it was the match versus Rise. They force it all the way to game five, and then they just get, like, blown out in that last game. You know, they fight hard game in and game out. It's just they need to get past that mental block of closing out games. 
Well, here we go. We'll see who can close out this series. Someone's got to win it. Luminosity versus Dream Team, and already up the start, it's a two-man push from either side towards Bottom Mansion. And it does look like, at the moment, Dream Team do get the better of that one as Diabolic soars in for the double kill. Right, so Mansion Control is going to be important early on for these teams. It gives you an easy vantage point over the hard point, especially if you're on the side of DT. If you speak out the window like this, doesn't pick up the kill there. It's three go down for DT. This is going to allow Luminosity to push a bit up on the map and start putting some pressure over on the DT spawns. Saints already four and one on a four streak. He's 325 points away from his lightning strike. And he's already out. been inside the hard point through the first start of this game. He's got one player slowly beginning to peek above him top hut. He will get that nice. kill and he somehow stays alive. Narrowly escaping that player. Finally, Chino does chase him down. DT should get this last little bit of scrap time, but it'll still be Luminosity out to an early lead. Yeah, Chino could just kind of hang out here, and he has an easy entrance over towards the next hard point through the bar. It's just his teammates need to establish some presence near that area to make it safe for him to move in. And now with Chino with this initial positioning, he's kind of relying on Diabolic to be a nuisance in this position. We see it time and time again, just getting the angle over near Kitchen. Big kill from him as he shuts down Saints, and this is gonna allow his teammates inside the hard point, Chino, to be a bit more comfortable, and also allow the rest of the guys to push up and give him some help. I was reading the Reddit earlier today, and a lot of people were saying, you know, is anyone really happy with kind of where the submachine guns now are balanced in the game after the it. most recent patch? And it seems like a lot of people are very fond of the kind of new updates that we've now seen to the Vesper, as well as the submachine guns in general in the game. Loving it so far. As you can tell, there's a lot more variety. We've seen Kudas, we've Ooh. seen VMPs, also the Vesper being brought out uh, in, in, in certain times, so far we haven't seen it tonight, but there's definitely still reasoning for it as Chino picks up a kill. DT Practically spraying out that to a seven-second lead and growing as they'll be able to grab this last 10 seconds. Of yeah, I expect this one to be pretty close going into at least that first bunker hard point. Whoever is able to solidify position and lock down that bunker hard point, at least for me, is going to win the game. Well, we'll see who does exactly that. Early control of half wall goes over to Luminosity. He does spot a shadow, but there's Happy. Using that HC to push out the spawns at four red arrows, slowly pushing out a bunker. Saints has his plate full as he's the one trying to stop this push. Gets one kill. Now the second challenge is Diabolic with some beautiful shots there as he jumps down and connects with the kill. Another HG coming soaring in, and it does look like DT have finally broken this hard point. You know, you talk about being able to trade kills effectively, following your teammates' push up inside the hard point as well as working together and chaining kills together. DT did everything right when breaking this hard point. Now they just need to do the second part, which is pick up kills inside the hard point, defend your player. I mean, Chino, he's got just about all the time in the hard point for his team at a minute and six seconds. As time starts to wind down, it's all about the next one. As replays falls off the map, Diabolic will begin the rotation over towards the rocks. And he can, if he continues running around the outskirts here, be a very big problem for Luminosity. Also has heat wave available for him, but he needs to do something to contest these spawn points. You got two LG players in Saints. So heat wave comes in, takes down Saints, but Spaces is around in the area as well. Diabolic can't pick up that kill. Big big stuff coming in from the LG guys as they're looking to main, maintain control of the spawns for this current hard point. So even between these two teams right now, we mentioned how Saints is a playmaker for a squad. Well, he's at 14 kills right now, 14 and nine. Leading his team in the end the game in the slaying department. Chino with that AR able to pick up one sender answers back with another one of his own. DT still holding on to this narrow lead, but it does look like LG have come in for the break. Right, don't push. No reason to push. It's only 25 seconds remaining. You're all alone. Your teammates need to gain some position. You already got replays set up inside the bunker. He's gonna find an easy kill in the happy. We'll get flanked here. Unable to pick up the kill on Diabolic, but definitely would have liked to see DT play a little bit safer there. No reason to push for the Rockstar point with 25 Ooh. seconds remaining. Back up towards Bunker. This is where games are won on Stronghold. Spacely with the beautiful slide in, and they're not able to trade the kill right away. It does look like Luminosity will be able to overwhelm this one, but Happy's on the full flank. He's got one player in his sights, takes one, gets the nice. second as well. Nicely done by Happy to get that full flank, and look at how far out Luminosity are now spawning <laughs> because of Diabolic's position. He's got them spawning all the way at as satellite. Well as Chino too. And this is going to be, what, a 15-plus second kind of rotate back towards this top bunker hill? Look at DT back out to a lead. Well, first, LG need to rotate over and, and get a better spawn for them to try to attack this hard point. Then they need to pick up Diabolic, who is contesting that area of the map. Then they need to flood him through this very <laughs> narrow doorway. Things not looking good for LG at the moment. As uh, Heat Wave's being called in by wow. the teams, LG still unable to break in. And, you know, I don't even think DT used their specialist weapons here. I think they did it with just their, their raw gun skill ability. 
you know, their, their grenades as well. They're able to lock onto that bunker hardpoint for just about every single second. What's going wrong right now for Luminosity? They're just not, they just didn't hold down enough off the rotation or they didn't break it well enough? What, what is it in your opinion? Yeah, they did. Obviously, they didn't break it well enough. You yeah. know, they, they don't break it in. Well, they don't break that setup on their first first push. Diabolic pushes all the way out. They get flanked twice trying to break in from um, this uh, alleyway side. And when they don't do that, you know, then you saw them spawning all the way near rocks. It took them a good 15 seconds to set up Ooh. another push. They don't break it in then. Just things not working out for Luminosity so far, but they're still in this game. You know, they're only down by 30 seconds. They also have, you know, some specialists to work with as so I believe it was Spacey with the Pure Prior. So they could still find a way back into this game, but as it stands, DT, they're starting to build a little bit of a lead. Center just took out his Annihilator. That should be a first kill. Oh, he just narrowly whiffs that shot. A nice strafe by the player sitting at half wall. Beautiful nade comes in from Chino. Diabolic picks up two more. Sender finds one as well. DT now beginning to just run away with this game at the moment, Revan. What a start they've had right here, and already three players on their team positive, and Diabolic sitting at even. Yep, Chino's here to try to hold on to the current position that DT have. As we move into the match and hardpoints, a 57 lead for DT. Now, this is starting to get pretty comfortable for them. Assuming they could keep on building this, you might see Chino maybe take out the Purifier here. I think there might be enough time for him to maybe earn it again if he goes on a bit of a spree as we go around towards the second bunker hardpoint. Three go down for DT, though. Chino, there's some big kills for him to make. Also has an HCXD card to work with as he has his teammates setting up for a push on multiple angles with oh. the MR6, unable to get it done. Here's Happy with the VMP to follow it up. Three go down for LG, and that's a perfect break for DT. They set up a push going in from the side door as well as the staircase. Yep. Chino pushes in. He's a distraction as they turn around for the side door after they clean up Chino. Happy is there to keep the push going. LG now desperately trying to contest, but there's only 15 seconds. DT don't really mind giving up that amount of time, assuming they rotate now and gain control of the half wall, jump wall position. They're going to be in a fine position here. And you can see Chino knew he was the bait for his teammates on that pinch. He flew out of his positioning behind the cover mm -hmm. to make sure everyone had to turn and put shots down on him. Still a 50 second lead for DT. Happy getting the entry kill. LG, though, respond with three kills of their own. So they should be able to re retain control of this hard point. Yeah. And now it's going to be DT up for the break. Can they get it done? Kind of sucks for DT right there, nice. right? They, they give up the final 15 seconds, but they, they just don't get any position over near the jump wall, and there you go. Well, again, they set up a push together. They clear out the hard point. They push for multiple angles, but here comes the heat wave coming in from Luminosity Gaming. As quickly as they lost control, they quickly take it back, as it's going to be Saints moving around towards the outskirts. He's able to find more kills, adding on to his uh, impressive count already. He's got the most kills on his team. And he's continuing to build. LG, they're right back in this game, Purge. Oh, Saints need one more kill to earn himself a lightning strike. That's definitely frustrating if you are Saints. Luminosity should grab these last 10 seconds of scrap time and bring the game within 20. Spacely trying to pick up a kill middle map. He doesn't connect with one as of yet. And you can see how everyone is saving these specialists, Revan, for this top bunker hard point. This one, I feel, is going to be heavily contested down like the final 20 seconds. Yeah. But that bunker is going to be everything. I mean, it's kind of like... You should kind of give up the last 20 seconds regardless yeah. and just fight for that position, you know. It's kind of investing those 20 seconds into maybe a, a possible 60 second gain. The one thing working for both these teams is, I mean, they got like every single weapon to work with. It's basically with the purifier, replays is working towards the camo, Saints towards the heat wave. John used his annihilator there, so I thought he was going to save it for the bunker, but he, like, what's the point of even pushing at this point? He's so far away, 30 seconds remaining. He's going to have one player to contest him, and this is going to be Sender. He's getting pretty close to his Annihilator as well, and Sender's just waiting for his team. So this rotation, yep. definitely going to favor Luminosity. They got more players over near the bunker, but Sender He's might be the, the same race for DT. Beautiful job by Diabolic to read yeah. that there could still be a player trying to watch that flank. Now the pinch coming in from both sides. DT get the first two kills. They're going to find the Ooh. third as well, but the Purifier actually makes it an even trade in the hard point, which is going to favor Luminosity. They've gotten the split uh -oh. spawn as well. They need to wind up realizing that there's a player in this back park area. They do just heat that. Wave, and the push comes in. Heat wave popped by Diabolic. Both of them. They actually both use their heat wave there. And Diabolic's going to pick up two kills on the entry. Make it a third as well. He can get help from his team. And now Chino's got the purifier. And oh, God, it's a massacre. Oh, uh, yeah, just going to push out this cut, forcing LG to spawn so far away once again. Four. Perfect play from Chino wow. right there. DT are able to break in. And they could win on this hard point. So LG need to keep up the pressure. Need, need to keep putting <laughs> putting on the pressure and try to break it, find a way. A solid shot from Diabolic, he's able to clean up that kill, calls into HCXD. 
We'll be able to scout out to see if anybody's pushing him. This is fine. One player pushing him. Already weak. This might do it for DT. But wait, LG pushing in from the Jeep side of the map. They're going to contest long enough so that DT cannot win on the remaining time. As three LG players remain inside the hardpoint DT, they're going to cut their losses as they only need 10 more seconds to win. They're going to set up for this upcoming middle hardpoint. They definitely still have a chance. They do take down the man that's really been carrying this DT squad at the moment. Chino at 34 and 22, almost three minutes in the hardpoint. 240 to 195. Nice. Chino gets two. Can't spot the third player as of yet. Beautiful Semtex comes out. Now he's going to come flying in. Look at the confidence from Chino as he gets another kill. And they regain control of the hard point. Make it four in a row. Almost gets the opportunity for a fifth. But the trades still go in favor of DT. Look at how aggressive they continue to play. 246 now, 247. Oh my goodness. Luminosity doing all they can, but that will end the it. game. Chino, 30. 40 and 23, 11 defends, two minutes and 40 seconds in the hill. An MVP performance from him as DT win map number one. I mean, you talk about being able to set up to break a hard point. DT did it perfectly throughout that entire game. Yep. Seems like, you know, even if they didn't rotate first, even if they didn't have any position to work with, they would wait the perfect amount of time to set up, wait for each other, push it from multiple angles, chain kills together. Everything went well for DT for that game. Oh, absolutely. And what was interesting to see is I was expecting a little bit more out of Luminosity in regards to getting control of a hill and holding it down, yeah. right? And I feel like that whole game, Luminosity's scoring was just like eight seconds here, yeah, nine seconds here, while DT would give up those eight or nine seconds to then get 20, 30 seconds, even on the rotation as well. Frustrating loss for Luminosity, and I say that often, but that one felt even worse because I mean, they, I mean, they couldn't, they couldn't stop Chino. Too. Yeah. They couldn't stop Chino at all. Chino goes off. Luminosity, they don't really get... They probably get a total of, what, like 15 seconds at most from both bunker hard points. Yeah. Like, when you put yourself in, in a position like that, it's going to be tough to win a stronghold hard point because th then it comes down to, what is it, like a 105 points gained from two bunker hard points for the DT guys. Like, that. that's already almost halfway to winning. There's a look at your after action report, Chino. 40 kills, 23 deaths, least amount of deaths in the game, most kills in the game, most hill time in the game, and most defense on his team. Almost statistically leading every single category. Here's a look at the highlights from the last game. I mean, DT man, coming out of the gates hot, Revan. I was not expecting that to be quite honest with you. I mean, I probably could have expected that. You know, DT, they've shown good performances <laughs> time and time again. I probably could have expected, I like that. You know. They do have a solid hardpoint game. Their search and destroy game is there as well. That might be one of their better game types. It's just a, a matter of, of the game five. That, that's really the thing that haunts them. I mean, they go big time and time again throughout this bunker hardpoint. You see Chino pushing, th pushing it out with a purifier. I mean, they really win the game on those two bunker hardpoints. Yep. And you mentioned how DT, they are very good at hardpoint. It's one of their stronger game modes. The only reason why is just because I had higher expectations of Luminosity, really. Okay. Like, I knew DT were going to do pretty well. That game was still pretty close, even with Chino just dropping ridiculous stats, two yeah. pieces. That that Purifier play was absolutely nuts. The confidence to flood right outside of Bunker just shows how well he was performing. But either way, Luminosity dropped that one. Now we're going into S&D on Fringe. And I feel like I've seen a lot of Luminosity S&D Fringe. I don't know why. Maybe it's from scrims I've watched or just casting their matches in general but luminosity this is a team that i feel like spacely and john are like the duo on this map they play very like mm -hmm. on the same side at a lot yeah. of times especially on defense towards uh towards tin and in that a bomb site area so we'll see if they can come out on top first bloods have been so crucial and stamping on this map has been so crucial tonight. But yeah definitely looking out for replays on lg so who, who is it going to be on dt to maybe contest that maybe like chino is going to bring it out we've seen chino kind of experiment with the po6 from time to time yeah i mean it really the banner protect phase is going to determine a lot in this game. You know, if they go after overkill, if they go after the SVG, try to target down those sniper rifles. But like I said, going into this map, I think this is going to be pretty even for both these teams. Uh, I think maybe we go to a round 11 here. Yeah. I don't know. Like, just overall, the way these teams match up against one another, it's fairly even across the board, right? So Diabolic and Saints was the big matchup we covered post game. I think those guys match up pretty well. Then you have somebody like... Uh, Chino matching up against maybe like a, a replay is another AR player. Yep. I think for the most part, maybe they are the assault rifle players are a bit stronger on the side of uh, Dream Team, but on the side for LG, I, I think their SMGs are really good. I, I, I agree with that breakdown. I can see where you're coming from on that front. 
Fringe, S and D, gonna be the next map. The slight delay here mm -hmm. is this players, you know, getting into the lobby. Yeah. Making sure everyone's set, making sure all the rules are good to go. Just gotta get some luminosity players on the correct teams. So now moving forward, we did this with the last couple series where we talk about S and D, kind of what we're expecting. Far like further in the series now, you got uplink on infection, evac, yeah. CTF, and then Redwood S and D. When you look at those maps, who do you really favor in those game types? I think CTF, I favor Dream Team. They seem to be a very frustrating team to play against in CTF. Yeah. Uh, you see a lot of players tweeting about them. They, they get frustrated by the way they play, but they play a very safe style of capture the flag. Once they get that first flag cap on the board, they're, they're probably not going to leave their base for the rest of the match. And for the, mo it, for the most part, it's pretty safe to play, but it leaves you open to, you know, if one team makes one good push, that's it. You have no, no chance at stopping the flag cap from coming in. So on uplink, I think the way these teams match up in uplink, I might favor LG a little bit, just because they're able to put on a bit more aggression with their SMGs, maintain that forward position. So I think if DT win this search and destroy, they'll be in a good position to close this match out on yeah. the CTF. So you're thinking if DT win this, they win it 3-1. Yeah. If Luminosity win this, they lose 3-1. Uh, if Luminosity win this, um, <laughs> they might 3-0. Uh, no, 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 not 3-0. They might... That would be impressive. Yeah, Luminosity won this and they 3-0. That would be the crazy no, no, thing. No. I think we go to game five if Luminosity, if Luminosity wins this search right. and destroy. I'll give that to you. In which case, DT would lose the series. I'm sure that's what you want. I'm sure that's what you want to see. Whoever was right on the uh, hashtag CWLPS4 at home, whoever said that DT would win that hard point, you are correct. Good call. Now, though, S&D is starting up. We are loading into the ban and protect phase. Will we see a heavy presence on the snipers? I'm looking forward to seeing where these guys go with this one. All right, Rapid Fire going to be the first band coming out from Chino here. Fully expect to see something like the um, maybe Overdrive band or Camo band. I think Camo's having a, a big effect here on uh, Search and Destroy, but the Concussion's going to get protected by LG, so that's going to slow the game down just a little bit, maybe force some players to run Tack Mask. And of course, it's always fun to talk about what third perk do you choose when you talk about Dead Silence, Blast Suppressor, and Tack Mask. Still waiting on the day where a team bans out Perk 3 Greed. I think that would make for a very entertaining Search and Destroy game. Is that what you're hoping for, Coach Revan? I wouldn't mind it at all. Uh, uh, hey, it would make things interesting. I think that's the like the, the best way to kind of change the pace of Search and Destroy. Is if, if you protect like something like a Concussion or a Flash and then just ban Perk 3 Greed. Make teams really have to pick wisely, huh? Yeah. They can't get too uh, overzealous with those Perk 3s. What, what would you pick if that's if that situation would come on a map like fringe honestly i'd lead more towards uh picking blast suppressor because honestly it's not like a map like if you think redwood or if you think infection where you're pushing down b street with an ar or top a on okay. redwood where it, like stuns are so big i think maybe there are a few less like all inish plays you can make on fringe yeah is that the reason why you're going behind yeah that? that's that's basically where i'm going with it you kind of simplified what I was saying. I was thinking of all the different uh, scenarios where it would be useful. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we say it all the time, especially in the, some of the early series uh, during this day, where teams would, you know, make an initial push over towards B, rotate over towards A, or start over towards A, rotate towards B. You know, just because you're pushing towards one bomb site on this map doesn't mean you're necessarily locked down at that bomb site. Like maybe you are at like A over on Redwood. But now we're moving into the specialist draft. Overdrive is going to be the first specialist picked up by Chino. As a replays, he's going to pick one of his own. Kinetic Armor Double makes overdrive. it through. I love watching replays with Overdrive, man. He's, he, he's someone who knows exactly when to use it in the correct scenarios. A lot of teams, you know, they think of it in such a linear way. Like, I'm going to hit the spot yeah, quick, Yeah, every right? time we see Overdrive used, it's like in the first few seconds of the round. Yeah, replays is one that can kind of change things up, try to catch his opponents off guard. Maybe, you know, the round starts off slowly. Then he knows, hey, there's four rails, and I'm sitting middle street, pops it, and just gets behind on that flank to rails a little bit quicker than they were expecting. So Sender chooses to go for Psychosis when active camo and kinetic armor are in the game. And once again, we're in a I situation- I feel like we've done this before. This has happened before, where kinetic armor has been available for DT, <laughs> and they didn't pick it, and they actually wind up you know, losing some rounds due to kinetic armor. Uh, wh why? <laughs> That's all I have to say. Why? Uh, I just think you get a lot more consistent use out of something like Kinetic Armor yeah. when compared to Psychosis. Very interesting pick for me. And that now you need to see a big play come from Psychosis. If he's unable to make anything happen from Psychosis, you know, it's probably going to be a, a pretty bad decision in retrospect from Sender. I just do not agree with not choosing Kinetic Armor. It's just too good to not pick here. Yeah, and 
you also kind of think, why? <laughs> That's yeah. all I keep saying. It's like we've seen kinetic be used so many times tonight. And it's how good in just it about every situation. Psychosis, what really, the map that I think it's the best on is Redwood because for that outer A push. Even Infection on that B Street, it's pretty good. Infection B Street is definitely a solid one as well. But on Fringe, I mean, yeah, pushing out of 10, it could be a good little bait. It kind of makes the opponents back off that power position when they're sitting where only, only their head can be seen in that back yeah. alley spot. But at the same time, it's like, Dude, kinetic armor is like a free kill inside A. Like if on the A bomb, you you pick out a sub, you push him with kinetic armor. There's your kill. There's your entry to sight. There's a whole round swung in your favor. I don't know. I'm not the pro player. Maybe this they know something that I don't. I, I would love to talk to Sender about this choice because this has to be a discussion that they've had before as a team. Because we've seen this same situation before. Yep. Where the other team, I, I believe it was against the Rise. You know, they chose kinetic armor. DT decided not to go for kinetic armor, and I, I definitely recall them losing a round because I think it was classic. who used Kinetic Armor, picked up two kills because of it. So I would love to have talked to Sender, see kind of what the team conversation is like on why they just, maybe they don't like Kinetic Armor. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's like, as you mentioned, they don't like it. Maybe they're just more comfortable not using it. It's, uh, it's all sorts of things. A lot of variables that come into play yeah. with certain players and their play styles. We still want to hear your thoughts, though. You mentioned who do you think is going to win the hard point? I want to hear who you think is going to win this search and destroy. Use that hashtag, CWLPS4. Who do you think is going to win? In this S&D, well, I said Luminosity, we're going to win 3-0. Completely wrong with that yeah. one. I've, I've jumped ship. DT win the series 3-0. They win this S&D 6-4. Okay. I, I don't know where. My, my head is just, after those first two series, Revan, I have a 100% energy bank, bank, right? And like a brain working bank. I used... 106% of that in the you first know, two I years. I think your Twitter mentions put you on tilt, man. I I don't know what you're talking about because my name is Pablo and I don't use Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I love that my lower third said Pablo, man. That, was, that changed my life for the better. So just flipping through these DT players, I just want to see kind of what they have available to them. I'm watching Luminosity for you. So Sender's got an M8, M8 for Chino, the MP for Diabolic. So three M8s for the guys on Dream Team. But Happy Ooh, firing down some now. early shots. This is weird. That was Spacely with a Man of War watching Middle Street. And when everything's about precision shots, shots in Mid Street, the Man of War doesn't come to mind. Either way, though, no one getting struck first. DT slowly beginning to push his bomb nice. up, and there's first blood by Sender. Beautiful shots from him taking down John. Yeah, that's going to completely open up things over near the B bomb side. DT, they're going to pounce on this immediately. Going for the bomb plant is diabolic, but one player pushed up near back barn. This is going to be Saints. DT, they have a good setup going right now. If they're able to find one more kill, the round will be completely in their control. And this is what I love from DT. They don't have anyone ridiculously just like flood through, right? Like look at how patiently Saints was waiting. He's not going to get any free kills on a player pushing. Now he's giving away his position. 4v2, 25 seconds left. This is a round that DT takes 100% of the time. Yeah, Diabok finds one player coming out of top bar and takes down replays. Nope. Wisely backs up. Sender looking right over him. Clean round coming out from DT. Don't think they lost a single player there. Not at all. And I mean, I'm not trying to be harsh on Luminosity, man, but I don't know about you, but when you look at this team, I just feel like right now they're just not. I think they should be better than the kind like, of gameplay they're showing. I just, I, I want, I have such, we all have such high expectations of them, right? Like, yeah. You, you see players like Saints, the world champion replays. Even, I mean, even John and, and Spacely are, are. It's not like they're just new players. You don't know what they're doing. You just expect these guys to really put a, put in more of a punch in their gameplay. And so far, it just looks like they're doing a lot of individual swim. Oh, man. Replace. He gets taken like out right very there. early on in the round. And who's here to follow the push up? It's going to be Spacey, but he's there too late. He gets shut down as well. John trying to put down some covering fire, but he's forced to back up. Where's Saints in all this? He gets cleaned up. Three down so quickly for LG. Make it four. Uh, uh, and what uh, was a 15-second round for LG? Good was that, execution from Dream Team. Was that not just exactly what I was describing, right? Where it's, I feel like it's all individual swim. Yeah. It, it, I, I, you know what I'm saying? I definitely agree with you there. Like, right there, DT, they get first blood. Did you see how perfectly they all pinched in and how flawless the end of that round was? They had someone sitting back rails, like there, even on that final screen. They had someone sitting back rails ready to end any pushback. Yeah. DT, they've already earned themselves an HC. They've already got a second one just 25 points away. The boys on LG, 0 and 8 to start off these first two rounds. All right, so Diabolic's just waiting to call him the HCXD. Yep. There's one player right outside of 10. That's going to be really And replaced. now he'll call it in so they can't switch to Flak Jacket. Mm -hmm. And here we go. He's just going to be spying for information. This is going to force replays to back up. And also, since the HC is around this side of the map, 
Real quick, I'm switching over to Happy because he's in a tough situation over near uh, back tracks as he turns around. Looks like he's going to get out of there pretty quickly. But here comes the HC closing in ground. Force him. Well, look how far he forced that player back up. Replace. Yep. He started the round right outside 10. Now he's over near the back alley. And Saints, he has a big job right here. He's trying to defend the A bomb site from the incoming push. Sliding in, not even able to trade a oh, kill. Look. They, they, they pushed it there in together. There goes John. Finally, they do get a kill. It's now replays. Just going to the B bomb site now. As well as Spacely yeah. in the 2v3. And they're going to rotate. They're going to get spotted from Middle Street somehow. Chino stays alive. Happy's able to trade that kill out. There, the replace has really nowhere to go. This is the yeah. only option he has available to him. He's got to go all the way around. Grandma's this is going to take at least like 20 seconds to get to the bomb site. And he's, he's going to get spotted by this player sitting rails. It's probably someone with an AR. Yeah, you can see he's got that M8 in hand. And what does he do here? Tries to win that one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Uh, Dreamwork. Uh, Dreamwork. Dream Dream, Dreamwork. Yeah. I it. like it. Their teamwork is just on point, man. Just working together. I mean, you saw that bait slide in from Chino. They even are able to, like, Saints isn't able to trade a kill there. Just they know exactly what they want to do. Their execution is on point. Seems like they're all on the same page in terms of strategies that they want to implement. And this LG team just seems like they're really flat right now. You only have one kill, and that's from replays. And that was really off a trade as the players slid in towards A. And now replays in a nice spot on that white truck. Oh, Saints man. getting no stunned man. out. The first player slowly beginning to peek in. That's first blood for okay. replays. Good kill for him. The flank, though, comes in from Happy. He's trying to stay alive. Chino trades that kill out. It's now a two on two. Oh, they've been spotted. Spacey's going to wind up flying out. He's left in the oh, one no. and on two. And he gets a beat down on Chino. Now one on one. Senders on the full flank, though. He could get a six timing on Spacely. Is Spacely expecting this? It doesn't appear so. Oh, no. If he goes for the bomb nope. plant facing 10, okay. I like this. So I this, like this. this is definitely going to work out for Space. Uh, oh, God. Did he just jinx it? Psychosis available for Sender. Don't expect to see it used here. It's basically just kind of watching what's going to happen. Sender's still in a good position. He has no idea where he's at. He's expecting a rotation, but he's still going to be in a good spot, right? He's not too far away from the A bomb site. Might even see Spacely as he exits from Bricks. But Sender's just going to play it nice and slow. Real quick. Okay, so he doesn't have an RK5. So if he decides to push into Bricks, will you expect to see him take that out? But now he needs to start eliminating positions and kind of clearing out corners up. Oh my God, the timing basically could get a free kill. He does see him tra travel in for bricks, and there you go. Nice. Luminosity are on the board. Nice job from Spacely to clutch up in that 1v2. Yeah, just good patient play, good discipline shown by Spacey as well, not pulling the trigger too early. Some maybe more inexperienced players would have immediately shot as soon as they spotted him near the bricks windows. But Spacey knows the situation, knows there's still plenty of time for center to make a play happen. Makes the safe play, comes out with the first round win for LG. So maybe they start to turn the game around from here. Let me just quickly flip through the DT players. So they got two HCs, almost an overdrive to use, and they have a Psychosis as well. Could use Psychosis out here at the A bomb site? We'll see what he decides to do with it. I think they're going to try to wait out an HC. Who's this in the back of the map? Chino. Doesn't appear he's going to use this one. Look at the rest of his teammates. It's going to be happy using his to lead out towards the A bomb site. And once again, playing for information. They spot one player over near the back alley. See, this is where you flood out and you have yep. an AR pick the player off that back spot. Center also flash. used Psychosis. A but Happy with the HC, he finds replays. So that's a trade kill there as a Diabolic fell early in the round. You still got Chino on the flank, but Sender, you see his clones kind of over near the middle of the map. Maybe a, he was a, too close to the doorway Look or something Chino. when he popped it. Chino's going to have a free kill on the yep. player pushing through trains. He read Spacely like a book. Number advantage back to over to DT. And they're just going to rotate this one towards B. Oh, you've got to love decisions like this, man, as they're going to play for middle map control. Yeah, and they're pretty much going to contain these LG players over near Bricks. Chino wants to get watching the flank. Yeah, Chino sh might be able to find some kills here. Don't want to go oh too far God. away from this corner, but these players are so close. Yep. Oh, hello. It's, it's a flying John. <laughs> John earned himself wings there. Unfortunately, though, doesn't fly him away die. from enemies. Chino does get taken out, but that's all the information. That DT need. They've got the bomb planted. Saints, you need to play like a hero, my friend. That was his first kill of this game. And he's, oh my god, he gets tagged up by an M8. Happy pre-fires him there. He looked a little frustrated after he got killed right there, Evan. What well, I mean, wrong? you start to take shots, you get weak, you, you think you want to regenerate your health, but instead he just kind of walks into Happy's pre-fire right here. You see Happy, he's just pre-firing the door. Saints walks into the line of fire, doesn't even give him a, himself a chance to win that gunfight. But DT continuing to impress me in search and destroy. I, I think if they win this map, it could possibly be a 3-0 for DT, man. They're DT, looking really good right now. A combined positive 12 at the moment. Replay's about to earn overdrive. Maybe that's something that could help LG to come back into this game. 
will be ready built for the start of this round. Chino still saving his probably for the next offensive side. I wanted to see maybe he used it here. First blood by John. Spacely with that Man of War almost gets a nice nade towards middle map. So it's DT playing from a number disadvantage. We'll see if they change anything up, though, in their strategy. Yeah, one of the first times we've seen that throughout this search and destroy. But for the most part, they're playing it pretty well, you know, not trying to force any issues, still waiting for LG to make the play happen because that's what you got to do when you're on offense. You have the bomb. You need to try to get that bomb planted somewhere, and DT just trying to play for information and stack bomb sites accordingly. And it appears they're doing just that. Look at how pacively, okay, pacively, patiently. That was a mix of patiently and pa uh, passively. LG is are that playing Webster's this. Dictionary? That, that, that one is not. Yep, DZ is, but that one is not. Now they're going to begin this push through towards Tin. Oh. First kill coming in favor of Chino. But Unfortunately, gets the no for him. So early on. Saints does die. Diabolic also has Heatwave. Gets one. Oh, the two piece as they body stack. And everything's falling apart for LG as they're now in the one on two. They also need to plant this bomb. No way. And they heard him pick it up as well. They know exactly what's going to happen here. No, oh, whoa, whoa, God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why send two and like the, the, playing a bit risky, especially oh John God. takes on center. Yes, time to get this bomb planted. Diabolic will be able to pick up the skill, but oh, uh, bomb does get planted. And he gets the HC from it as well. Ooh, that Five was scary to one lead. You saw how they kind of just held hands going through that one door, right? Yeah. Kind of what happened to LG where they body stacked. Same thing almost happened to DT, but now DT in a commanding position in this game. They got specialists to use. They got some score streaks as well to back it up as we see the final kill in the round once again. I feel like that's the dagger for LG in this map, man. Like, I feel like that's something, that's an example of a play, and I'll see if you agree with me, that kind of puts you on tilt a little bit, right? You get the round yeah. advantage. It's just so depressing, right? Yeah. Like, you're like, all right, here we go. Come on, let's start, let's start to mount this comeback. You know, we can start to bring ourselves back in. Chino uses overdrive here. Slight body stack with the player in the back already weak. Chino's going to flood right out through middle street. He swaps over to that VMP, expecting oh, going right to, Bricks. to get first blood inside Bricks as this player, uh, these two oh. players hit back alley. Do they know he's here? No, they have no idea. Saint spotted him. Oh, yeah, He's going to come around through mid-street. Happy with first blood onto John. They're still desperately looking for Chino, who's now flanked all the way around through Junkyard. And he's Saint like, oh, wow, him. there's no one here. Yeah, there we go. It's basically where um, Chino will get taken down. So it's a three on two favoring LG. Camo available for Happy. Don't expect him to use it in this round. I think you save it for a future one. What's the Diabolic Hop? He has Heat Wave and HC, so maybe if they use them with each other, but he also has two stun grenades to kind of check around these corners and check these different positions. One thing working for DT, of course, is, uh, well, there's nobody at this B bomb site for Luminosity. So if they wanted to just go for the bomb plant, they really could just get it down. just don't know that, obviously. Yeah, they, they don't have the information we do. <laughs> so now the time that they had to get that bomb planted, that little window, now well, that works. That kill, though, is it going to go in favor of Diabolic? Good happy spot this player, Barn. Now a two on two. I mean, he's pre-aiming this area. Now, now he might use camo. There's a bit more of a map. Now, is this position. one where you want to see like a camo like peek towards middle street? Like that's what I'd love to see. He flies out of that window yeah. with camo. They're gonna hit this back alley. Diabolic expect to see him use heat wave if he gets the opportunity. Also one kill away from the lightning strike. Player in the back window. Not gonna pop the camo as of yet. Pop it. Yes. There it goes. <gasps> oh my god, they're she's trying to shoot he just at him. Ran right over. Oh, player. oh my god, he oh. tried to follow up the kill. Oh no. He misses the RK5 shots, but the dart's the dart. been called in. Oh god, this is gonna be interesting to see. They're say gonna just search for his body and it might not be enough. He doesn't see anybody over near the bomb site. Spots one top barn. They're trying to bait out the flash that kill, yeah. And he gets That's taken it. out, but will he be able to get there in he time? Will, he will, he will. He will. 11, 10. He will, he will, he will. He will, he will, he will. He will. Oh my god, he's up! No! Oh, oh, I think I he got it. I don't know, man. I think he got it. I think he got it. I don't know, man. He got it, he got it. He 100% got it. He got it. He got it. We're going to a round eight, boys and girls. <laughs> oh, he did not! <laughs> And that right there, boys and girls, is the story of Luminosity on that map. It just kind of blew up in their face. <laughs> that slight little kind of stutter yep. step he had. He missed the slide. Oh, I'm heartbroken for Luminosity. I'm heartbroken, man. Diabolic goes huge, man. 10 and 3 finish for him as DT. They seized control of that game early on, and they did not look back at any point oh in any God. round. That was one of the closest bomb defuses I've seen in Black Ops 3. We, but we, I had no idea. Did you have any idea? I, I, I was, it like, was I, obviously it was close. He got it. Yeah. You, you sounded very confident that he had it. I just want to see more Call of Duty, man. I want to see Luminosity try to fight back. I mean, the dart play worked. Yeah. It paid off. I guess because it was like a good well, time. The thing is, if replays doesn't botch that slide, I think he has it. Yeah, same here. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we both, we, and like, it's crazy to think that that. That was a tenth, like a tenth of a second 
little slip up. Yeah. Came back to bite him. I mean, great job so far from DT. They're finding a way to close out these games pretty convincingly. Now we're moving into an uplink infection. And I think, I don't know this for sure, this might be DT's first 3 0. You heard it here first, folks. Everything crazy I don't know is happening. For sure. Though. But I can confidently predict that because, like, every DT match goes to game five and they lose it. This could be the night of the most insane things. Imagine if now CLG beat Envy like three to one with Perplex. I would lose up. my mind. I actually, I actually would be never allowed to cast again. I would be told. There's uh, the after I mean, action report. We haven't even talked about it. Diabolic ten and three. Look at his score. A thousand more score than anybody else on Luminosity. Pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, good stuff coming out of DT. You could really see that they're on point tonight, man. They look like a well-oiled machine. You know, they're working off of each other beautifully. Their teamwork is on point. As uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna take a look at some of these highlights from these games. But that that's such a crazy camel play too, coming out of Happy. Like, he, he jumped over that player. Yeah. Turned around, didn't pick up the kill. Very close stuff. God, that game had so many rounds that you were like. Luminosity, number advantage. They should be able to close this out. And oh, that he, body stack too, man. Even down to the body stack, and then even that kill on Spacely in the final round that Diabolic got. I mean, Diabolic just picks up the free kill. There was that body stack. That was the kill on the bomb planner at the end of that round. I thought he was just going to pop a heat wave. But he wants up not even having to use it. Here's the dart. I got to see how how close this was. I hope we could slow-mo this. Seven, that was seven. He picked that up at 7.4. I mean, he literally picked that up at 7.4. <laughs> that was like, hold on. That was like oh, 0.05. Look, his finger's right there. His character's like, D -d 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 -d, please. But it doesn't work out. You really can't imagine, get much closer imagine than that. Imagine if you could pop overdrive, and that made your fingers move quicker. So it's like, you could pick up the bomb with five seconds left, pop <laughs> overdrive, and your guy's like, D -d 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 diffuse, and then he drinks a coffee. And Damn, and around make it happen. I think I should be a game developer. That, that's my new career now that my casting career is over. So South American farmer and uh, Call of Duty game developer. Add that to the list of Viner, graphics designer, commentator, professional dancer, freestyle rapper. I've had a lot of a. Uh, I'm only 21, but I've had a. This a is what I work career. with, ladies and gentlemen, on a daily basis. <laughs> Stop acting like you're the victim here. You love me. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to the match at hand. Okay. Because DT are, are, are looking better than we've ever really seen them. I mean, they're closing out games. They're winning it in convincing fashion. I think uh, I, I definitely think that they want to, you know, close it out here uh, yeah. on this map three. And I think it would definitely be a good change of pace from the uh, kind of what, uh, what what is this word? Um, I can't think of the word. Potato. No, it's definitely not potato, but kind of gut wrenching game fives that we've been seeing. I'm gonna say this: DT win this map. Obviously, they win 3-0. DT loses this map. This goes to game five round one. Oh God. I got another game five. My heart can't take it, man. I know. I but agree with you. Entering the bandit protect phase, pretty common stuff so far. Rapid fire Shiva, high caliber, all going. There's the overclock to follow it up. Now LG, man, I, I just think they need to do something different here. Kinetic armor, boring. Ban um, ban some flak jacket. Ban some flak jacket. Rock double needs. They're going through this bandit protect phase quite quick, huh? Yeah, it seems like both teams kind of on the same page and what they want to take out the game. Maybe Concussion fouls it up. Maybe concussion seeing... Overdrive? Concussion Overdrive. Yeah. That's what I'm saying it is. Boom. Let me see that Concussion for 500. For 500 COD points? Smoke screen. Oh, my God. I can't get anything right today. This is just not your day, Jack. I'm just holding the L on this whole day, dude. It's rough. It's rough a rough day for Jack, but I'll get over it. So, no Kinetic Armor here. And, you know, we, we were talking about how big Kinetic Armor was. Well... LG didn't really have a chance to earn kinetic armor throughout that whole search and destroy. Yeah. Did Replace use it? Replace had um, overdrive, I thought. Yeah, no, but did he use it? I mean, like, did I, I don't remember actually seeing him use it in the last game. Honestly, we were watching DT so much. Uh, we didn't see much from LG. It. Yeah. So these guys, uh, Heat Wave Scythe Active Camo picked up by the guys on Luminosity. Heat Wave Scythe Active Camo Annihilator for the guys over near DT. What does Replace decide to go with here? Does he go for another ability? Does he go for an Annihilator of his own? Maybe a Sparrow? Tempest. Okay. Ooh. Uh, I think I... Well, obviously, I want to see it used a bit more. I'm not sold on it just yet. 
but obviously we were theory crafting a little bit earlier. You know, yep. you, you shoot the drone carrier with the Tempest. One of your teammates runs up, he gets chained on from the Lightning. That's obviously a case where the Tempest can be pretty useful. But for the most part, it's just another long-range, one-shot, one-kill weapon. Yeah, and I think it's one that also teams are starting to realize that it's really darn good for holding off your base. Like, yeah. if you're in the one-on-three, one-on-four, even. I wonder if you could just shoot it, like, on the ground, and will it still chain there? Or does it have to... It has to connect with the okay. shot. If it just fizzles out if it doesn't hit. That'd but be a lot cooler. Um, oh, God, imagine if it was, like, a mini hive for a second where you shoot it in an area, and for, like, two seconds it stays there and then goes away. But think, honestly, you're in a one-on-three. Drone carrier pushes up, boom, you one-shot him. That then it, it starts charging quicker, so your shots can go a little bit more qu quick after that. Turn, boom, hit the second. Third guy gets chained. Fourth guy peeks over, kill him. It could happen. I mean, it, you definitely wouldn't make that play happen, so. All right, well, I don't see how I have to roast me. My feelings are already hurt. My Twitter mentions. Yeah, you've been having a rough day, man. I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you. You don't deserve that. this. I appreciate that. You know, I'm going to teach you how to cook pasta tonight because of it. That would be a big moment in my life. Revan doesn't know how to cook pasta. 22 years of age. I don't know how to cook a lot of things. Also, guys, be sure to wish Maven a happy birthday this upcoming week. Oh, he's turning, what it, was it, 64? No, come on. That was 10 years ago. He's turning 75 this year. Really happy Jeez. for him. Um, it's actually ridiculous um, to see that he's actually the combined age of all four players on Luminosity. He's older <laughs> than them. No, I'm just kidding. He turns, uh, I believe, 31. Um, 31 is a new 21, so that's what I've been hearing a lot as of late. I have not heard that <laughs> once in my life. <laughs> Trying to make him feel better. <laughs> You don't have to do that, yeah. but he roasts me enough. He said that I was going to lose my job because of what happened tonight. You know how scary that is for a young man like myself? It must be pretty scary, but once again, I need to bring it back to Call of Duty, Jack. We're just waiting for them to load yeah, in. Yeah, no, Come on. A little bit off topic. I want to talk about Uplink Infection. We kind of saw a little bit about how, how this map is played, yeah. you know, from the Optic Gaming, from the Phase, and, of course, um, the Complexity and TSM, respectively. You know, it's kind of... You take it in waves, right, or, yeah. or steps, baby steps. So first step is you get your first wave of kills. You push up. Uh, you take establish some sort of position over your middle map. That will allow you to you know, get control of the drone and start to move forward. Then you take control of your enemy's team tank, and then you can work spawn traps from there You know, with that kind of second, third wave of kills that you're going to get. So once you get the spawn trap down, that's really where you can see some of the, the scoring rallies or the scoring trains come into play. You see it a lot from a, a team like Elevate. But I want to start this one off with the guys from Dream Team. More specifically, I want to give my man Sender some love. That's what this guy's in store for us. We mentioned in the last series how it was a 4 AR setup for the one squad versus the 3-1 for FaZe. This series, both teams electing to use 3 ARs with one sub off the start. Okay. First few kills going in favor of Luminosity. DT Chino now back to their own here. base. Replays has that drone. Chino doesn't die, just like you said he couldn't. And now the push towards Barn commences for Luminosity. Replays is going to toss that drone forward for yards. Okay, Chino pushes in. He gets taken out. It's going to be happy here trying to maintain this position. You know, Sender just throw this, throw this drone off the map, man. You could really stop this push from LG just by tossing it out. Actually, if you go down for LG, they're going to go ahead and wrap it all the way through Snow Street. And they got their teammate that spawned up with them. Here they go. Happy gets the first kill. And now it's an all-out push from Dream Team as they've got three players from Luminosity that they have to take down. Replays loses that first engagement. One pointer. The second engagement goes in favor of Chino. Dunk, 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 go! And, oh yeah, this is... Oh, there. Oh, we saw this earlier with Elevate. Oh, yeah. imagine it got stuck in the tank this right there. Oh. That would be unfortunate. Now, though, all four players of Luminosity near middle map. DT do strike first. We'll see if they can stop this push. And it does appear they will be able to do so for the moment. Yeah, Sender could shoot all these players in the back right here. As yep. they, it's going to be LG kind of pushing for that neutral drill. Sender on top of the spawn, so he's going to find one sick. player off spawn. Takes down replays. This is going to allow DT to continue to mount on the pressure over your middle map. Diabolic oh. spots this player in middle map. Could have saved Sender's life right there. Instead, Sender falls, but they might be able to get control of the neutral drone. In the end, it's going to be Spacely doing some big defensive work for his team as LG hold on. They will start to stabilize a little bit, but still one player threatening for DT. It's going to be happy as he's starting to earn himself some streaks. Interesting to see that he still has the dart on. I think maybe that, that might be... Yeah, forgot maybe he forgot to take it off from Search and Destroy. Yeah, because that is definitely not a preferred uh, score streak uh, in a game mode like Uplink. I mean, yeah. he, how, how, I've never seen dart really be used in this. I don't know about you. I don't really think you, you want to use something yeah. like dart because you're out of the body for so long. I, I think something like the HCXD where you know, you're not really controlling it for too long is it, obviously a, a little bit better just because you don't spend too much time out of your body. Whereas something like the dart, you're spending a good amount of time not doing anything on the map, not but helping your team push the drone up, not maintaining map control. I love this, he's gonna yeah. hit the bottom wall run. Now this is something that's only possible on this side of the wall. 
compared to the other side of the street. Nice. He'll just toss that drone Spying off the map, time. buy his team time, and now look at the four Luminosity green arrows. Pushing in from really completely different areas on the map. They've now begun to pinch space. He's going to run Ooh. this one to, to Snow Street. But he's got an enemy already pre-aiming here around the corner, and he's just going to get cut down right away. Yeah, Happy can now just run this drone right up through Snow Street, maybe even toss oh, it off the map. Yeah, enemy nice. Just him. tossing it for yards. Saints does pick up the kill, and that's three down for DT. It looks like the drone actually took a bounce off of the big rock right there. I mean, so. Luminosity have done a great job of kind of keeping the pressure on DT, but they've still yet to score. You can see DT are just They're doing a good all defensive they can. team. Yeah, trying to keep this one two to zero. Diabolic now beginning to push up. He gets cut down. Spacely finds a kill with that Semtex, and now the push comes in again from Luminosity. We see DT can hold oh. on. Get Chino with the fast swap over to the MR6. The toss goes in, and it's oh. picked off by Diabolic. The defensive plays continue. DT. What heroic plays they're making at the moment. Now they're just looking to buy time once again, just wrapping it over towards the snow street. But that's going to force rotation out of LG as they clear the player in middle map. They're going to go ahead and run it back. And you see the arrows from Luminosity. They're so confused as to what's going on. But you got to watch out for Happy. He's gearing up for a flank. Can definitely make a play happen for his team. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to him as the drone was dropped by Diabolic. But if Happy finds two kills right here, this opens up the entire map for his team. There's the first one. He's got a player right below him as well. He's going to toss out those stuns. Hasn't used this camo as of yet. Saints now push, pushes up. He keeps trying to do everything for this Luminosity squad. Now 10 and 6. Oh, unfortunate right there for Happy as he's only able to get one after hitting that hard flank around Snow Street. Definitely a one, I think. And now it's Luminosity again grabbing his drone, but oh, two no. players fall. Okay. Nicely done by Spacely. This should, yeah, this is definitely a one. Uh, oh. Misses it. Oh. oh, he could sneak past these players. Bruh. Yeah. Wow, you hit him with the bra, huh? I mean, it, it's just it's so heartbreaking to see teams lose like some of these games because you know the, their missed one point tosses add up at, at the end of the game. So this, this should be a one point game, but in the end, DT maintaining their their lead, and now they're just looking to play defense, which they have been for most of this game. You know they've been defending their base, holding off push after push for Luminosity Gaming and LG. They've had opportunities, they've had positioning over near the DT base. They've just been unable to make anything happen from it. Every single time they start to push towards that tank, it just seems like they always get too dead. Yeah. Right? Is I there think that's something really where the, the smoke grenade ban is really hurting them. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. I didn't think about that. 2-0 with the half. Dream Team five minutes away from closing out the series. 3-0, Revan. Which would be super impressive. Yeah. I mean, like I was saying earlier, you compare the experience on both these teams. I mean, you got a Call of Duty World Champion on the side of LG, but DT, man, they are they are they they're impressing me a lot tonight. Yeah. This is the DT team I, I expect to see every night now. All right, well, you heard it here first, DT. Papa Revan says you better keep stepping your game up. He's got high expectations. Okay, so they have, LG has two weapons and one ability to use. I expect to see Saints, yeah, he's gonna take out the Scythe now. I think he actually used it a little bit too early. You see, like, it, this is just unnecessary time being wasted off the Scythe right here. Yep. And it also slows him down as he pushes forward. It, he's already taken fire. Spacey, though, he gets the direct impact with the grenade right there to open <laughs> things up for LG. I remember the last time I saw that, nice shots in from Saints. That's gonna cause one player to slowly rotate over. Nice positioning right below this window. Oh, Saints now turns on Diabolic and gets that kill. The Tempest being brought out now, I believe by replays. We can hop on board yeah. with him and see how he's gonna use this one. Gets one kill, but the charge of time took a little bit too long. Yay. Either way though, it's one point for Luminosity. They hit a one pointer. And now it's John, the last one pushed up for LG. He can't take down Sender, and now it's map positioning. Back to even between these two squads. On the back of a Scythe, a, a Tempest, no camo, no heat waves. So two specialist weapons uh, allowing LG to really push forward, put on the pressure early on, and they get one point on the board. John now has control of the drone. LG trying to push forward. John in a little bit of trouble. He gets nice some help replays. from replays. That's going to be two down. Camo now popped. He's going to gain some position back near the DT base. So Are they going to be able to find him? Yes, this is going to be a dunk for LG as they take the lead. Nicely done by LG to use their specialist, man. They, they've brought themselves back mm -hmm. into this one. Saints very far away from getting himself that next uh, site. Don't think we're going to be seeing that again this game. But now the push comes in. Chino does fall. What Saints is Chino starting to get into a rhythm here. You see him 18 and 12, starting to find his place on the map, being aggressive, exploring the map center now. He has the Annihilator available to use. Two players for LG posted up over near the middle of the map. Happy Wolf find one, takes down replays. The other is spotted. That's going to be Spacely. He gets shut down by Sender. I think this might be a, a, a good time for Sender to take out the Annihilator and help his team 
kind of push forward up on the map. Diabolic has that heat wave ready to go. He does get his corner peaked by John. Great map awareness by John to expect the player to be just around that side. Chino wins a gunfight middle map, but the HC is there to trade it out. So LG doing just as good a job of playing defense as DT did. And they're beginning to kind of yep. regain some control in this game, Revan. There you go down for DT, Diabolic. He needs some help from his teammate Chino. They cannot lose control of their front tank right here. If they do that, well, they're going to be fighting from their base for uh, a good portion of the time. Spacely looks like he's going to pop the heat wave. That's what you're looking for. The beatdown, he will connect. There's two go down for either team. Happy, it, Happy called in the dart for a little bit. Was able to pick up a kill as Chino on the defensive side of things does find Spacely. The drone now dropped. Anticipating this player to come around the flank. Did it guess correctly, but he gets taken out as John, he takes the drone. Does hit two. that one point shot. Good LG job from LG. Side two, definitely performing way better. Yeah. Saints still stays alive. That's gonna buy Luminosity in even more time. Saints is going off, man. To grab this drone, and I mean, look at him right now. 25 and 14, he's a man on a mission. Renato does not want to see his team lose another matchup in the World League. There's two kills in favor of Luminosity. The Scythe now in the hand of Chino. Replays last alive. He's just trying to play with Great for his job. life. Just staying alive. Here comes the full rotation out of DT. This I actually they really need like a score here. They've got camo on happy. They've still got that scythe, if I'm not mistaken. Did they forget about replays? No, no, no. They've got someone watching their back. And that's the scythe. Chino's gonna get him. Annihilator and scythe being brought in by DT. Happy able to get around. No oh. camo used just yet. Going all the way around the row and not oh. No! He didn't realize that when no. he throws it, it drops his camo. Why? Not like that, Happy. Oh my he was god. He's trying to reset the armor maybe as he got shot, but it yeah. counts as shooting. It does. Uh, loses the camo as soon as he popped it. Definitely a, a misplay from the guys on DT right there. In those moments, that could have been the difference maker if he Not ran well for the middle cut. Four dead, Luminosity with full map control. Revan, it looks like Luminosity are going to force this game four. Yeah, they're looking good. Only a minute remaining. If they're able to get, you know, one more point on the board, they put themselves in a much more comfortable position here. But for the time being, they're just looking to slay out, maintain control of middle map, and slowly try to slay their way up towards the DT base. One player coming around the flank. It's oh, going to be Diabolic. They've got to try to chase this kill down. No, they're not going to get it. They're going to be able to toss it forward for yards. Yes, it is three dead, but still. He's just going to maybe wall run here. And the drone and has been it. all the way pushed down the snow street. He's going to try to push oh. this one forward for yards, but instead, it's DT who gets the kill. They've got two players to okay. beat. A nice kill inside the base. Diabolic could hit the hottest leg of 2016. He gets one. Will a drone stay on the map? Falls off the map. It does. Diabolic now needs to push this one up. He's all by himself. Ah. 20 seconds left. Nope, yeah. that's going to do it. Uh, Happy fell off, off the map. Had heat wave in that moment. Happy, yeah, he fell off the map. I'm not sure. Uh, I done. didn't catch it, of course, on, on the screen, but that's going to seal the deal for game number three. Uplink Infection will go the way of Luminosity Gaming, and they hold on to see a game number four as we're going to be moving over to EVAC for some more CTF action. Wow. DT, let me down that game, to say the least, man. I mean, they had two good options. I think that camo play had to have been a misplay. Oh, know? 100%. Uh, I'm re Not much more we can harp on there, but yeah. you, you got to know that shooting a drone it is going to stop your, your the camo you just popped. Bit unfortunate there from Happy, but... Uh, DT, they, they were playing well for the most part of that game. Yep. LG, they were able to get, you know, what was it, like three good pushes going. They get a dunk there off the camo from John, and then they get two good one-pointer plays uh, coming off of Saints just being a beast in the slaying department. Good stuff overall from LG. They hang on. And now we see another EVAC CTF. Wow. Man, this, this has been a great CTF match to watch, uh, especially in the first two matches, both going to overtime. Do we see another overtime here? I mean, I feel like we have to. I feel like we it's just primed to happen. At this point, I'm expecting another like 19 minute long CTF. You and I are screaming at the end. There's like six Cerberus on the map. I don't think you could Someone have six Someone calls it a nuke from Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> That's how the game ends. <laughs> I think I'm becoming delirious. This is going to be a, this is going to be a great night. A long night of casting. Andy versus CLG still to come. We are slowly new, watching Jack lose his mind. The new fourth in Perplex going to be on the squad. I mean, there's just so much to be excited about, man. And hey, we cast tomorrow. And then we wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Thursday, and we travel over to South Carolina. It's going to be a fun week for us, man. Lots it of Call of Duty is. action. I think everybody's excited to see uh, some LAN action coming out of Black Ops 3. Yes. UMG, South Carolina coming up this weekend. If you're near the area, come stop by. But taking a look at the final scoreboard from the previous game, really the standout player, Man Saints, 27-20. and 20. His teammates going pretty much even throughout. But that one misplay from Happy was really the talk of the map for me. So I've been really kind of trying to dive deep more into analyzing the game and 
learning about the game. And one of the first things I found deep in my research is Saints is pretty good at COD. That's what your your yep. late nights of research uh, have shown you? Yep. Studies, websites, books, textbooks of Call of Duty. Saints is good, man. And he showed it there. Half these highlights are of him. It's a great analysis, Jack. Thank you. I pride myself on it. Yeah, I mean, Saints, we can't say it enough, man. He's a very consistent player across every game mode. As a, I mean, going into the CTF, I already talked a bit about how DT like to play CTF in general. And if they're able to get that first flag cap on the board, they will not leave their base. Yeah. They have a year supply of s'mores. They're able to make campfires like that. They have very comfortable tents as well. Mittens. Yeah, in case it gets cold here. They just camp it out, play some base I, defense. I do you, now, do you agree with that? Do you like that play style or no? I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. I'm a player that did exactly that in 2011. <laughs> you know, uh, but it was a little bit of a different team dynamic for me. It's definitely kind of like a safe way to play CTF. Obviously, you're not going to put yourself in a position to score more and more flags, which is what you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. But for DT, the one drawback is if the other team is able to get two, three down and, and make one good push, there is no way, unless you have score streaks, that you're going to be able to stop the flag. Yep. So there's a drawback to kind of every type of play style you want to implement in CTF. That, of course, you know, it's pros. is It's going to be tough for the other team to pull a flag. It's cons is you have a tough time getting a return on, on the flag if, it's, if it gets pulled out. I hear you on that. I mean, you mentioned how it's tough to get that return. Evac, from what we've seen so far tonight, it's like, even if you have score streaks, it's tough because there's so many buildings yeah. to hide in. There's a lot of cover. Yeah, instead of it being really kills like we see on Stronghold where it's more kills, this map it's more like just slow them down to try to get the return. Hit that middle wall run, catch some players off guard. This map it's much more of kind of using it as like a wall where they just yeah. have to wait. Buy your team five, six more seconds as the lightning gets called in. We even saw some fake pinging before yeah. where players would kind of ping, wait it out, and then drop it a little bit later on because players didn't know when to It makes the other team so scared. They're yeah. like, oh, God, a lightning strike's coming in. They all run into the buildings. Then the lightning strike never comes. Then they peek back out, and then it gets called in. Yep. And they're like, oh, God, I just wasted all that time doing nothing. <laughs> and I had no idea when it was coming in. So you, you love seeing things like that one. So game four between Luminosity and DT about to get started. We are now in the lobby. Evac CTF will be the map. I'm leaning towards Luminosity now in this one. I'm leaning towards DT. Oh, you're, so you're saying 3-1 three, three, DT? Mm -hmm. I mean, remember I said, if DT, if Luminosity win that game three, I think it goes all the way to game five, round 11. So I got to stick with myself. All right. Well, we'll see if that happens. But speaking about the banner protect phase we're about to be seeing, I think a team like um, DT, they're going to want to ban the smoke screens again. Okay. I think for sure something like Overdrive gets banned. I think they protect one of the tacticals to just try to, maintain that slow pace of CTF. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that's going to favor DT a little bit. But one thing working in Luminosity's favor is uh, they have Spacely. Spacely is the sneaky beaver of Call of Duty, always finds a way towards the enemy team's flag. And I think uh, being able to utilize all the wall runs on this map is greatly going to favor him. So you think he's one that's definitely going to be using the afterburn blast suppressor combo? If, it's only, if it makes it through the banner protects, yeah. I, I like that. I, I love seeing what Cole was doing, man, with the... Uh, with the the side flank, and then even Weech was doing it as well on TSM, yeah. where you, you you go right towards outer kitchen, and it looks like you're just gonna fall, right? Because you drop right down from kitchen towards that lower wall run in the opposing team's base, then you flank all the way around helipad, because that's always where you see the final AR player sitting, those small little outer lanes. You know that feeling you guard. get like when you drop down floors on an elevator? Yeah. That's the feeling I get whenever I see a player get that low I know. on the wall run. I know, I see, I, I, I'm like, oh God, he just suicide. <laughs> okay, no, he's about to make a hero play and pull the flag. Something you like to look out for in CTF. Banner Protect is starting. Game number four now underway. Rapid fire, the first thing that comes out of the game, it's going to be Chino with that one. Let's see how LG decides to respond. Of course, we fully expect to see Rapid Fire, a High Caliber, maybe the Shiva go as well. But in terms of things that will spice up the game, I think we'll see a smoke screen ban. I think we'll see an overdrive ban, maybe a camo ban as well. Okay. So you're looking for more of a specialist, specialist heavy ban. I, I'm looking for things that'll allow the other team to pull out the flag easier, kind of ban. Right, and that's going to be, I think, the game plan for DT here. I mean, we've already seen what a smoke smoke ban earlier in this in this game uh, in the series, yeah, right? So just last map. Yeah. So, wouldn't be surprised to see that 
be brought back into play again. High caliber and rapid fire, really the two things that we see consistently banned every single game. Maybe he protects the concussion here. Yeah. As we head further into the ban of protect okay. phase, kinetic armor. These guys really don't like kinetic armor. Even when it's available, they don't <laughs> want to use it. Who was that? That was happy. He did, they don't want John to have that. There goes the smokes. And then to finish things out, it's up to Saints. We'll Concussion's see where he still goes. in. What else would Saints have on his mind here aside from banning out concussions? Active camo, blast suppressor, afterburner. Okay. So the concussions make it through. I think DT, they're not going to mind that too much. In terms of your third perk, maybe you just use blast suppressor along with uh, attack mask. I, I think maybe you use attack mask off the start of the game. If you kind of see that the other team's not throwing a lot of concussions at you, just go ahead and switch to just a blast suppressor class. Annihilator and Scythe, the first two picked up by Luminosity, as well as DT. Okay. There's camo, the camo, yeah. Definitely going to be a difference maker in this game. Now with smokes out, I mean smokes banned out, you need something else that can let you pull it really in broad daylight, and that's going to be camo that gives your team that option. Yeah, also being able to close the gap between you and some opposing players. We've seen it come up clutch, you know, getting a, a lot of clutch returns. We'll see what else these guys decide to choose, as it's going to be LG's pick right now. John might pick, oh, he's going to go with Vision Pulse here. So that's also something that can, you know, aid you in getting a clutch return as it's going to be the final pick for both these teams. Heatwave gets picked up by Saints. Sender, I think you might go for a Vision Pulse. Yeah. Yep. So it's going to be an Annihilator versus a Scythe here. That's the only difference between both these teams. Of course, the Annihilator, you're a lot more mobile with it. Yep. So I think uh, Spacely, a player like that, it's really going to favor him. And, and that's a little weird because I, I figured out you would have seen maybe Spacely go for Camo. This is something I was talking about the other day, actually. I got the opportunity to play with replays, and I, I kind of brought it up, and he was like, eh, I could see where that we kind of brought up at is, I feel like Spacely just hasn't gotten comfortable with the specialists yet on this team. Uh. I think the ones he always wants to go with are always picked or favored by his teammates, so he kind of gives it up. Yeah. So like even there, you say, like, Annihilator, does that really fit the play style of Spacely? It's like... You yeah, figure you'd see somebody like Saints or, yeah, or John. But this is also the guy who's using glitch in S and D a lot yeah. because it's it's still like that. Well, what's really left? Do I use psychosis or that's glitch? a really good you know, point you know that you bring up too. Yeah. I feel like that's just a dynamic of this team where they're just he's just not fully comfortable in his specialist that he's having to pick at the moment. It comes down to kind of the role, and this is not this is not something I spoke with replays about, but kind of the role that replays plays for this team is he's used a sub so much in Call of Duty, now having to fit more of an AR role for this team. Something that I feel like he's not nearly as comfortable in as well. I mean, it's tough for, I mean, whenever you're playing Call of Duty for so many years, you're yep. used to playing one specific type of role, and then all of a sudden you're you're on a team, the dynamic changes, and you're forced to change your role. Proofy, Proofy is a great Proofy, example. Proofy, yeah. we both said at the same time. Proofy is the one that comes to mind. I mean, Proofy, in to that. if you ever have some free time, go watch some early gameplay of Proofy back in, like, Modern Warfare 2. Uh, Call of Duty 4 is just assault rifle shot. It's really unfair. Yeah. And then, you know, later on in his Call of Duty career, he was forced to kind of switch to his submachine gun role. Now he's really kind of coming to his own in that role, and now he can kind of float between the two pretty well. So it's something that kind of, I think, benefited him uh, in the end. But, you know, just adding on to the talk about LG, you know, that's something replays. You know, he hasn't really been kind of forced to run an assault rifle too often. So yep. he's still trying to, you know, find his place on this team with the assault rifle. And that's kind of, I feel like, two things that are really hurting Luminosity as a team at the moment are definitely not mm -hmm. helping them in regards to their kind of push to climb back up yeah. the ranks here in the COD World League season or stage one North American Pro Division. Game four is now loading up. Luminosity backs against the wall trying to force this game five, which would be another Redwood S&D. And then we still have one more treat of a match for you, Envy versus CLG, which would close out the night. All right, Jack. It's going to be ready. a 40-minute CTF. 40 minutes. We're going to double overtime. Yeah. That's how it's going to happen. There's a good chance I pass out and die if the <laughs> CTF goes on for 40 minutes. I'm just being honest with you. You're uh, starting to... I mean, that's something we were predicting of Maven. I figure you're in a bit of a better shape than, than Maven is, at least health-wise. I mean, I'm pretty sure that people of fa Optic and FaZe fans would be... Uh, more than happy to see me in a, in a rough spot right now. But hey, Luminosity get the first two kills to start things off. I mean, 
Afterburner banned out. We saw that earlier on. It seemed like players were still more than happy to still go for some crazy, uh, crazy wall runs, huh? Bit of unfortunate timing there for Chino as it's going to be LG. Mainly replays. He's going to get a touch on the DT flag. With the MR6, finds the kill on Descender. One more player to get past. Unable to find the opening there as Diebox had to shut him down. So early flag grab for LG. They're going to continue this push forward. We're watching Spacer right now. You see where his teammates are pushing from over near the kitchen side of the map. There's a space just trying to lock down position near near the middle of the map. But for the most part, LG happy just maintaining middle map control. Space Lee now pushing up. Oh, he you got see how it. patiently he's playing, and yeah, Chino sees him and takes him down with ease. And now it's a four-man push towards this AC side. Replays gets one. Happy trades that kill out. Happy so fell far, off the map. pretty slow thing, and Happy fell off the map at the end of that SD. He falls off again here on EBAC. All right, so three go down for DT. This is going to allow LG to push up, but they're ignoring one whole lane or kind of two on the map, and you see them. Because of the way they spawned, replays immediately backs up. He's going to go ahead and push out a different lane on the map, just making sure nobody from DT was able to sneak through while the rest of his teammates are going to reposition and fight from a different angle. Yeah, you can see how the pressure is still coming in from Luminosity as well as the rest of the team. Unfortunately, though, replays last alive. Spacely. Chino now slowly peeking up through Zig. His teammate does fall. Now the kill goes in favor of John. That's gonna mean that's, that's gonna be a flagpole from Luminosity. Replaces across the He's map. He's gonna be able to get this out clean too. Look at where the remaining two DT players are. It's gonna be up to Happy to try and make something happen, and he's forced to go along, along the wall run here. Oh my Fortunately, God. he's gonna this come up right behind surprise. Replace here. It's gonna find him. Can he pick up the kill? Yes, he can. But can he get the return? Not just yet. Saints is able to oh pick the flag up with Heat Wave. Doesn't even need to use it. Nobody from DT in a position to stop it. And this was like my one way that DT could win this game is if they got that first flag on the board. Yeah, and not because LG, they're setting the pace for this game. I think they're in a great position to take this. Saints six and three gets the return there on his own flag. He's close to, to lightning himself, and now there's one player here gets that kill as oh, well. Saints is pretty soon. So close to earning his lightning strike. What a start he's had to this game. And we've seen how these score streaks have impacted CTF. Yeah, I mean the Cerberus. Yeah, it's got a lot of kills. But uh, it's also it's done some, some not so great work. I mean, it's heck, it's even hurt teams in yeah. regards to phase and jumping off the map to try to pick up trophies on your class. So Saints just playing for these streaks. And you know, we were talking about DT, how whenever they get the first flag on the board, they like to slow the game down. Now it's oh LG as Saints, Saints picks up two, earns all of his score streaks, the Cerberus, the Hell Summer, so the Lightning Strike. And with a minute 50 seconds remaining, not going to use the Cerberus here. Definitely going to save it for that second half. But his teammates making plays happen on the other side of the map. It's basically going to get flanked out here by Sender. Only a matter of time before he drops. But his other two mates, uh, Saints is going to push up over near oh the God. kitchen side of the map. You know, LG does have a good spread going on right now. They have all the lanes covered. They're not allowing DT to really move out on the map. It seems like DT are playing very uncomfortable right now. You just see DT. They just can't get any pressure towards his kitchen side. Finally. Now they flooded players through. And all it took was killing Saints after his sixth streak. Okay. I mean... I think it would be the worst decision ever if Saints used a Cerberus on side one. I don't think he'll, he would ever do that. As they begin to kind of wait things out, Diabolic slowly pushing up. He, he sees someone alive. bottom laundry, and yeah, he's going to do just that. They need to to pull the flag out. Does he use it right here, though? Does it appear so as he gets taken out from behind? Yeah, Saints just doing whatever he wants on this map. You know, he could really fill in the gaps, play the pace he wants to, because, well, he's finding success right now. And Saints is another one of those players. You know, we talk about karma, how you just let him fly. Saints is another one of those guys where you're just like, all right, Saints, fly. you do what you want. We will play around you. Just go and kill whoever you can. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Space Top tier wall running. Master class of how to wall run on Black Ops 3. No, I'm just kidding, my friend. That, that was great, though, that we picked that up on your perspective. Camo being popped by replays. This is all in regards to base defense oh, as he gets two kills. A nice job with the M8 there. And really, that should do it, Revan, for the half. No one's going to cap a flag after this. Yeah, LG, they set the tone early on in the game, getting that early flag touch, just pushing DT further and further back in their base. And we were talking about it. The one drawback to playing a play style like that is trying to get a return is going to be super tough. Granted, Happy had a good opportunity as he wall ran up behind replays, but he also had three other players from LG to get past, unable to do so. LG going to the half with not only a 1-0 flag lead, but Saints is still fully streaked out, man. Here's a look at the final kill cam. Spacely drops Sender. 
LG up 1-0, Revan. If this goes to another game five, I, I mean, I repeat it all the time, but Woo. I really don't think my, my heart could do it. Well, if it comes down to it, man, I, I could solo cast. Don't worry. You always say that. I think you just hate me, dude. I love oh, you, look. Pablo. Wait, can we, can we watch it land in? There it is. Right on his own flag. We'll see if it, if it has, like, a positive benefit to this game. Man, why am I not watching Space Lee? He just picked up two kills with the Annihilator. He's already running towards the DT base. Happy the last one alive. He can't really rotate back. He does wind up picking up a kill. Oh, Space Lee does spawns. get dropped just short. Camel now available for Happy. Heat Wave still for Diabolic. You know, call me crazy, but I, I think he might have to use his Heat Wave to take out the Cerberus. All right, crazy. We'll see if he can do that. Right now, he's got to reach the Cerberus, and yeah. when Saints push him down aggressively, leave his base first. Yeah, unfortunately, Heat Wave is not a global um, specialist. Imagine a global specialist. Dude. That would be pretty crazy. Like, like you pulse out like an EMP or something, and no one can jump <laughs> for like five to ten seconds. That'd be pretty crazy. See, I should be a game developer, man. I'm telling you, that would be pretty nuts. No comment. Where's no the comment. Cerberus at? Oh, all the way back to the base. I didn't even notice. I see where the Cerberus is, man. There it is. Look at him. He's playing a great anchor role right now. Base playing protector. That defense mode. Yeah. It'd be cool if you could set like certain modes on the Cerberus, like attack mode, patrol mode. Ooh, I like what you're thinking now. See, dude, I'm telling you, we should be game developers. I don't know, man. Isn't it I that like easy? Casting. So do I. I mean, I like farming too, because my name is Pablo. But replays is pushed up with that AR. Spacely now going to pull this flag. The center might have some words for him. He can't get the kill as of yet, but they've got him pinched in this back side of the map. There he's cleaned up. But that's fine. I mean, LG, they're not really pulling this flag to cap. Yeah, they're, they're pulling just... it to draw DT back yep. to their base. And DT have been worried about their base since the first couple of seconds of this map. Yep. They have, this is really like the first opportunity they've had to venture out and explore the middle of the map. And as they push that, they're like, ooh, I had no idea this part of the map existed. <laughs> Never been this, this side before. Luminosity still up 1-0. DT, this is the furthest pushed up they've really been so far this second half is Diabolic. This Cerberus hasn't even shot because there's no nope. one to shoot at. And there it goes. It actually just disappeared. Ooh, Happy, I think he should have played it for a sneak pull so right I think, there. I think two minutes is the allotted time that it has on the he's map. He's going to camo here. Uh, he's confident enough to just win that gunfight. Now he's going to camo push on through. Did he see the Cerberus parts broken? I would assume so. Camo being used back. Okay, they got to do this now. And this is their best chance. Oh, the split spawn coming out from LG. That's going to be rough. DT, they're like, oh, where, where do you run this flag? Actually running up heat the wave. middle. Oh, it hit Does somebody, he dies. Is anybody here to keep the push going? Nope. Happy? Nope. Uh, rough play, rough series of events for DT. Really, that split spawn from LG. You got a guy spawning over near the glass side of the map as oh, well as kitchen. Replays. You won't talk about that. that. That MR6 was just disgusting right there as he took down yeah, center. Nice. Diabolic trying to be sneaky and now... Yeah, you like the idea because that's like the best way DT are going to be able to pull a flag out is if they sneak by somehow. Instead, though, not going to happen. There's cool. the MR6 brought out by replays. And Revenant, something tells me these guys have been practicing with this secondary. Yeah, Diabolic has to go huge for DT. EMP's being thrown out. Oh. The flag carrier getting it done. Replays with the MR6. This is another flag cap for LG, and that might do it that's for the map, man. Yeah. Even Revan, the house from being called in. We're going to another game five. Is a replay is going to get a Cerberus as yeah. well? Yeah. He's going to get a Cerberus. All right, yo, this is the new meta. You ready for this? What is it? The the Cerberus gets called in at the opposing team's flag. You control it. You have your teammate jump on it. And you're, you, you ride just kind of, you ride him. Majestic like like a horse into the sunset. If, if a team actually does that, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my entire bank account. Uh, the, you could keep your $50, Jack. It's all right. It's actually 16 Thank you very much. Replays dies, the Cerberus gets called in at the opposing team's base, so it could happen. DT with one minute remaining. I mean, <laughs> they need to rally through a Cerberus. I wish you could spectate the Cerberus, but only if somebody's controlling it. There's the Hellstorm coming in, not going to connect with a kill. Yeah, like this the, now LG just the need to waste like 10 more seconds off the clock, and this is going to do it. One player for DT in a position to get the no. return, but oh, the no, they, they know he's there. Him. They yeah. pinged the Lightning. John wins the gunfight. Now John's working towards some score streaks. That's it. That's game. The Cerberus might even get the return here. I think he just got taken down, but no, it's still in play. That's the game. Yeah. GG. Boys and girls, we're going to a game five. Another one. Did you just do GG Khaled? Another one. I, I, I'm so proud. Thanks, Dad. You've been listening to Drake. You just said another one from DJ Khaled. We the best.
Call of Duty Community. That's it. 2 0. Um, you Luminosity know, really, win it. Just, there's really not much to say about this map. It was very straightforward. DT, they were focused on their base. At the beginning of the game, LG put on enough pressure. I mean, it's like DT, what? Like six minutes to venture out and, and see what the middle of the map looked like? Yeah. Six minutes to get across the map. And unfortunately, they didn't. Did they even get close to capping a flag? I mean, at the no. end, maybe? No. And that was no, that was really it. So, Luminosity making that one look easy. Now we'll things now are going to be red for DT. It's a game oh five. God, don't remind me. <laughs> DT, come on. This is your kryptonite here. The game five That's struggles game five. need to end right here. DT, take my energy. You can do this. I believe in you. I can't believe we're going to another game five. Three in a row. I can't believe that it's DT again in game five and Revan. <laughs> There's a very good chance they lose this. <laughs> You're just giggling because it's like, what the heck? <laughs> if DT lose another but game five, if I were to put like percentages on DT's like chance at winning a game five, <laughs> it's like 90% chance at losing. So 10% chance at winning? Yeah. God, that's bad. And my math is great though. You see how quick I got that 10% left? Let's look at the after action report. Saints, another big game from him. 24 and 14, monster stuff. He's starting to find, get into his rhythm, and Two that's returns, scary for DT. One capture, I mean, everything going right for him in that one. John was really trying to be the sneaky player for his team. All four players going negative on Dream Team. And now this game five, Redwood S&D. Right, let's take a look at some of the highlights. Happy, right, if free plays are running a little bit slower, maybe he gets the return there. But going into like the half, it was already a rough spot for DT because uh, Saints hit, he gets score streaks around by a flag. And then, you know, like we were saying so many times before, when, when you're so focused on protecting your base and protecting your flag, that obviously limits your offense greatly. So the lack of offensive power from DT in that CTF game really hurt them, man. Oh, definitely. I mean, as you said, there really was no, there was no opportunity for them to score except for that last pull. And there that was still a servers in their base and yeah, their flag was already pulled out. It was a stalemate. So yeah. not a winning formula. If your dream team, game five now, Redwood S&D. 6-0 LG. No. All right, I'm not going to be that bold, but it would be pretty fitting for the, uh, for the DT teams. Just the way they've lost all these games. And, you know, it's not like DT is a bad team, guys. Like, they're, they're a very solid team. You know, they hang with the top teams from time to time. They beat Nopti Gaming. It's just something happens when they go to those game fives. It's, you know, you're talking a bit about, you know, your casting curse. How every time you cast FaZe and Optic, uh, they kind of lose. DT have the game five curse. Every they time they play game fives, just, they find a way to why, lose. Why is there so many curses in this league? I don't know. It's just a thing that if... Curse is no longer in the scene. You'd figure, like, that stuff would go away. Yeah. But instead, DT... They've got to be in their call right now, like, we got to stop doing this to ourselves. Because yeah. you were saying, after game two, this is a DT I love to see. A I mean, after even the first half of Uplink, when they're up 2-0, you literally went, this is what I expect to see from DT yeah. each week. This is a DT that you expect to see show up. And since then, they haven't gotten a point. They didn't cap a flag. And in the second half of Uplink, they didn't score once. <laughs> if they lose 6-0 in S&D, that, that would be terrifying. DT, please. Find a way, win a game five. You guys can do it. Something needs to happen in this banner protect phase to, to get them some sort of advantage, to get them some sort of leg up in this upcoming game. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but they at this point, when it comes to game fives, they need to kind of strip down everything they know about Call of Duty and start from the basics, right? They need to just you know do something crazy like ban flak jacket or something, right? You know. Ban flag jacket, ban trophies, and make double nade classes. Like that is definitely a viable strategy and something that will kind of catch the other team off guard. I don't really think any other teams have prepared for something like that. So if DT, uh, they just need to find a way. Like how, however you got to do it, just go out and do it, find a win. Ban and protect. Show us what you got. DT and Luminosity. Already at the start, it's the rapid fire going away yet again, and there goes high caliber. Okay. Nothing too surprising from these two teams. Yes, so far, so standard. Really the most standard you could get, the most basic. 
Uh, I got to think if it continues down this path, it's uh, only going to favor Luminosity. It's going to be a Thermal Sight ban from Happy. So already targeting the snipers. And how do you feel about the sniper rifle without the Thermal Sight? Um, it's something that I think that teams will then go towards Averix. Um, it's something that's very good, especially near the A side of this map. I mean, Chino went with a uh, Elo, Elo side. but that was on the PO6, yeah. so a little bit more of a different uh, style weapon. There goes the SVG, just banned right out. Yeah. Last time we saw the Locust ban as well to follow that one up. Overkill is still in play. Overkill, kinetic armor, overdrive, camo. Concussion, there it goes. That one final ban left. Huh. Vesper still in play. I, I can't believe we haven't seen a Vesper. I mean, the, the pro players have really lost faith in that weapon. Yeah, I mean, I've been able to kind of tell. It feels Shiva. You can definitely feel the difference in it from that mid-range. Yeah. The recoil is kind of all over the place. And maybe these players haven't gotten the opportunity to kind of remaster how to control it. Now, as we head into the specialist draft, you got to expect Camo to be picked up. Kinetic Armor still in play. Oh, man, if DT do not pick Kinetic Armor. I guess the one thing working in their favor is that first search and destroy, man, they, they completely dominated LG. It was yeah. a very convincing 6-1 victory. But please, please pick up Kinetic Armor, DT. I beg of you. See, on this map, though, I feel like if there's ever oh, a time God. you can get Sender. away with... Sender is the player who didn't pick it last time. He picked Psychosis last time. Oh, God. I can feel the stress beaming off you right now, Revan. Come on, Sender. You're running do out of time. The, do the right thing. I mean, does he go for a vision pulse again? Oh, God. I'm just... Listen, <laughs> kinetic armor is really, really good, guys. Like, if you find yourself struggling to find one specialist that, like, do you want to master or, or something just to aid you out in general in gameplay, pick kinetic armor. I promise Preach. you. Preach. It's very good. Yeah, especially for trying to retake that B or right. trying to take over B. Now, now this is how I see this game happening. Oh, here we, we go. We go to round 11. Yeah. Spacely has his kinetic armor. Yeah. Pops it. Yeah. Kills all four players on DT. Yeah. Round over. LG win. J J so what are they just like all flood down? They all flood up. They, they all start shooting at him. B bridge. He floods out with kinetic armor. He sponges all the bullets. They with body kinetic. stack. Yeah. If that is actually the way that round 11 ended, I feel like DT should probably just be kicked out of the league. <laughs> That's a little rough, yeah, man. And that is like, <laughs> That's a little extreme. Uh, league Ops, head of League Ops, has decided to ban DT from the league for getting four-piece by kinetic armor and not using it themselves. All right, but, I mean, listen, they were able to make it for, happen in that first search and destroy without picking up kinetic armor. Yep. But I think just the series of events on and how those rounds played out, they are just in a commanding position, you know, from the get-go of that game. But as the game starts to progress, as we play more and more rounds, you start to earn your specialist abilities. Like, everybody gets a chance to use them. Yep. So that's a case where kinetic armor, it could be a game changer. You, you, you pop kinetic armor, you push out the beat bomb site, you push into the top window, you run right up the middle of the map with kinetic armor, and you can do it. Oh, I'm just, I'm nervous that that comes into play, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm nervous that, like, there's a huge kinetic armor play where there's, like, an opportunity where it could have been the right pick, and then it, like, doesn't work out. That would just be horrifying because you've been preaching about it. You said it in game two. Again, in game five, they don't use it. And now I need to see something big from the Vision Pulse here just because, like, you had a chance to Kinetic still good. Armor. Like, it's still, Vision Pulse is very good. Yeah. But it's just more like... Is it better than Kinetic Armor? Kinetic Armor is that staple. It's just, like, the one that you always pick when it's available. If, if you were to pick, like, your top three specialist abilities, Kinetic Armor is up there. It's I like, think it's Camo, Heat Wave, and Kinetic Armor. It's like the pre-patch Vesper of specialists. What is that even supposed to mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing it, man. Revan, battle You're back in. It. All right, bringing it back. We're going to game five, guys. DT, the story of this team, man. They always find a way, no matter what team they're playing against, to make it to game five. This is a team they beat Optic Gaming. They've hung with the best of them throughout their entire career. And now it comes down to this. What is a huge match for both of these teams because they're both kind of on board the struggle bus together. One team could, you know, move up closer to hopping off the struggle bus with a win here. No snipers in play. I looked at everybody. Okay, that's exactly what I was going to see. I'm going to be watching Diabolic, man, as it's going to be a three man push for LG through this A bomb site. Looking oh good God. so far for DT if they just go right for this plant. Look at his movement. He's already got the trophy going down. Three players on the full flank and. You can tell Happy knows something's going on here. He's watching their back. 
Here comes first blood. Happy's not gonna get the kill as the player uh -oh. runs right through and he misses the boat. Okay, Center's firing at air as he's trying to shoot across the map. Now a 4v3 into the not check bunker? Do they flank and not clear out? Chino could make the, the biggest play of his life right There's here. He one. finds one. Oh, he doesn't see the second player in the water. Diabolic, Diabolic does get the kill, though. Someone sitting top window. Chino does see him. He's going to stay alive. Diabolic gets a kill, and it's Saints left in the 1v3. He's also got to get the defuse. Yeah, there's no way this happens. Pops back out, takes down Chino, needs to go right for the bomb. Diabolic. He's going to check. There you go. He gets the kill. 1 0 <laughs> round lead. DT on the board. Whew. Okay, so they get a good start. But what was up with that LG flank, man? They go all the way around the DT base, all the way around towards the back cabin. They don't clear out bunker. I feel like that's a, a very common position to play if you're on offense. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a little weird that you don't clear out that area of the map before you decide to push across bridge and close the gap to the bomb site. Even like a delayed pressure in a bunker. They had two people flanking that back side. Yeah. You have one person who pre-aims, sees if someone crosses bunker, because you expect that person there to go help Happy shoot the players in the back of the map. Instead, it doesn't work out. DT up 1-0, Spacey strikes first blood. The challenge comes in from Saints as well, make it a 4v2. Oh, Saints is going to continue to charge on in. Instead, though, he'll, no, he'll back down. He knows he can't risk yeah. dying there in that 4v2. Okay, so Spacey going for the bomb plan. He's got John right here to help him out. Ooh, John actually center. falls, but the bomb does get planted. Saints now threatening on the flank. He's going to come all the way around towards back line. He gets cleaned up as well. Center picks up his second kill of the round. Spacey and replays. There, the last one's oh live. Oh my God! Replays. He's going to hit some disgusting timing right here. Finds That's center. One. Finds That's Chino. Two. Easy pickings for replays as LG respond with a round win of their own. It doesn't much, get much easier than a two piece like that, huh, Revan? As you look, can see, they, they thought Saints. Look how he takes his time here on the second yeah, kill. They thought Saints was the one, right, who was going to push through. Was that, was that a locust in the hands of Chino? It was definitely a sniper rifle. I think that was a locust. I could get to him quick enough and we could see. You could tell by the streamlined streamline shape of it that it was definitely a locust. Damn. Oh, I didn't he get switched quick over. Enough. Too quick for me, Chino. One to one. Luminosity. We'll see what they do this time HC around on defense. HC to intro B site. Diabolic already earning that HC. He continues to perform well this series. He's going to fly out yet again. Oh, he sees someone middle, oh, so that's going to stop his mid that push. Sender shooting right over him. Diabolic gets taken down by John. John picks up two. And it's Gino still staying alive top bunker. He knows there's at least one player on those stairs. Wonder if he spotted the second. Oh, he's going to spot them crossing back. And now they know that there's one player over near bunker at least. Where is Happy in all this? Well, He's going for a bit of a swim, waiting for one player to peek out over near the bridge. Solid Ooh, that's shots. That's frustrating. Puts in two bursts, doesn't clean up the kill, so they know kind of Chino was seen near Bunker, Happy seen over near the water. Unfortunate timing for Happy, he gets picked up as he turns, and Chino, well, he's taking fire. He's going to get challenged here as he's already weak. John, did he get an ace That was an ace there? from John. That should, earn, that should earn him his HC. Yeah, well, I'll switch over to him. Nicely done by John there, man. Beautiful shots. Nice confidence to challenge this player. Winning that is the round for his team. LG now up two to one, man. Oh God, I can't believe this is happening again for DT. I'm gonna be so heartbroken if they lose this map. So yeah, John does have the HC. 250 points from the dart. And he's getting ever so close to that overdrive as well. Early nade gonna come out over towards the B bomb site and that does connect. It's actually going to be two players push up. Chino with first blood. He takes down replays. It's going to be a bit of an aggressive round from Luminosity Gaming. John might spot him here in the water. Yes, he does. Oh. Almost cleans up that kill. Is there anybody here to trade a kill? Saints is looking for one player middle map. Spacey is just going to give up on anything over towards B and go to the A bomb site. This is going to be the correct call to make. And this is going to give LG a shot in the round, like a realistic shot, if they get this bomb down like now. Well, Spacey decides to oh, push right on through. And yeah, they know exactly where he's at. Look at the green arrows. They're just going to begin to mobilize because okay. they spotted They're going to try to catch him in rotation, I guess, but... I, I, you're shaking your head. I mean, you have a, a clear bomb plan at the A site. They even spotted you there. You made it through lab. You made it through the outskirts as well. You know, nobody from LG or uh, DT is over near the, the A site. You could get that bomb plan off clean. And for the most part, I mean, you might be able to defend that bomb site four on two. You plant it in a... In a a good line of sight where you could see it from kind of like that middle tree. You back up, you hold the middle tree, and you hold the front tree over towards lab. But in the end, it's going to be DT holding on. Now they have just the HC to use. Might be a good round to use it. And it looks like they might be gearing up for uh, an eight-side attack. 
It looks like that's exactly what is going to happen. Happy. Watching the push. No I EMP hits. from EMPs. That actually could really be good, though, for DT. The HG comes out, so they're going to have an idea that the push is here, and here goes He's got already another red arrow now beginning to soar on in space. He's going to just stay alive. Give up his positioning on site, and he's going to wait for his teammates to flood on in. Chino should be able to get this bomb planted with the cover of the HC. Look at how annoying this HC is being. He's just really spotting for information. And he spots, like, at least three players right there. Pushes forward, almost picks up a kill with it. He's got a flood right... He's got a... I, think, I feel like he's got to push up right away, because all he has is a yeah. BMP. Oh, God! Chino gets first blood on John. The trade comes in from replays now, as Spacely is just waiting for this peak around the tree. They need to move. 25 seconds remaining. It's going to take a lot of time to not only clear out these positions, but they you also got to dedicate 7.5 seconds to go for the bomb plant. And oh, God. I mean, LG just waited so long, they're going to get cleaned up. Okay. DT went around. Ooh. They're up 3-2. to two. For some reason, I think this is going to round 11. Yeah? You think my prediction's right? I get that vibe. Oh, you think God. my prediction's right? No, the kinetic armor fight? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, right there, it, they didn't need kinetic armor. I like need that to go over to Spacely ASAP. I need to see how close this kinetic armor is from coming into play. Where are you, Spacely? Okay, he's around halfway there. John is so close to getting that overdrive. Wow. There you go. He's going to have it. Does he decide to use it here? Maybe to gain some early position over to the B site. It's going to be a four man stack over here to the A site for DT. Trying to uh, blind counter. What they think LG is going to throw at them, but they need LG, of course, have to be weary of the flank. But this is going to be a clean bomb plant for them. And uh, replays is just a little late here on the flank. He's going to go for a counter flank of his own. This oh could wind God. up working. John immediately turns around. What he, a weird he spots round. this as well. Yeah, LG, they need to push into lab or, or rotate back or something. They need to be decisive here. They cannot hesitate. Well, it looks like Saints is going to elect to try to watch it. Replays on the flank. Replays on the flank, and just like that. What looked like a rough round for Luminosity is now a number advantage, and the bomb's still down. Oh my god, Saints gets the best timing in the world, and okay. that's going to be a closed out round by Spacely. Three to three. These teams still holding on in this in insanely close series. Yeah, I mean, replay is, I guess that timing kind of works out in the end, right? He, he misses those two players on the flank, but he, he hits the flank on his own. And because DT sent those two players to flank around to the A site, they thought they had that area of the map clear. Replay is able to make a play happen as now we're all tied up three rounds apiece. Overdrive available for Chino, almost heat wave for Dybok, and here comes the overdrive. Gonna be using it over towards this B-bomb site, actually right up through the middle of the map. Let's see if he can hit a good timing here. Looks like he's gonna jump right towards top window. I don't think this player's expecting it at all. Yeah, Chino's gotten up here. Now you can see dust through the ground when someone jumps up oh, and lands no, on that area, but... No. Oh, the player didn't actually wind up running up, so Chino... I still don't think they know he's here. The, the bomb flank? should get planted. And is Happy, Happy just laying down? Okay, he's just swimming. Will they spot this area? They're going to need to check, and it doesn't appear so. John should be jumping in right in front of him. <gasps> he doesn't see him. He doesn't see John in the water, and Saints gets the kill. Now it's DT with the number disadvantage. The bomb is planted. They just need to hold off. If Replace walks up these stairs or even peeks around the corner, oh he'll find God. a kill either way, either way he goes. There's one person to his right. He what doesn't see the player. On? He gets taken out from behind. DT get three kills, and it's basically left in a 1v3 heat ball. What is going on? That round was just a, a very unfortunate I'm series of dude. timings for <laughs> the I'm lightheaded, dude. If Replays would have walked up the staircase at any time during that round, he would have had the kill on Chino. If he would have peeked out towards the B bomb site, he would have had, had that kill as well. Oh Revan, this can't be healthy. This can't be good for us to do. <laughs> The amount of my, my blood pressure is, has reached new heights from today's casting. Okay, so a lot of abilities coming into play for both these teams. Does um, John decide to use his overdrive here? Sender is, like. is 200 off an HD, and he's got Vision Pulse. And he's going to be the only one holding A. Oh, my God, this could be the sickest Vision Pulse if he winds up using it. HCXD called out from John. I just want to see what Sender is going to see from his point of view. He sees the HD coming. I see the EMP. But he gets challenged. Kinetic gets Armor. Shot. Kinetic Armor kills him. Replays with kinetic armor, gets that first blood. He follows it up as well. And now it's Luminosity. Oh, the here's, Locust. Here's the Varric site on the Locust. <laughs> Replays goes, okay, Chino, now you're being ridiculous. Four to four. Revan, this might actually go to round 11. I was kidding in my <laughs> prediction, and it's going to happen. I can't believe this is actually happening. Spacey should have kinetic armor by now. Vision pulse still available. Overdrive available. I'm losing my mind over here. 
we're going to round 11 shortly. I got, is, does he have, yes, he has kinetic. They have camo, they have heat wave, and overdrive being used. All four abilities. All four abilities for luminosity. Overdrive here on defense. I actually really like this, oh, but the player middle map spots him. Oh! John gets taken down by Chino, but replays answers right back with a kill of his own, and now it's a 3v3 yet again. Spacey, he's the man with kinetic armor. We'll keep him nice highlighted. Camo. With camo, replays finds a kill, and immediately moving his way up over towards the bridge. He's gonna find one more oh, play here, they just close like it that. Out. Luminosity one round away from winning the series in game five, and DT losing their another game five. I don't even want to exaggerate because I, I Someone actually Someone needs to give ridiculous. me some statistics. How many game fives have, have DT lost? Send them the statistics. They can be fake too. Tweet them at, at RevanJB, at CourageJD. Just send us. I would like some statistics. legitimate statistics. Send them big ones. Did Spacely use his kinetic? He did not. I'm going to be watching him. This is it, man. DT. This is LG's game to lose. Well, let me just flip through DT. They, they, they don't have. They, they have, have vision, vision pulse. pulse, and it's going to be another push. It's the same push as before. It's the same push as before. John's going to follow this HC out. Oh man, you see DT frantically rotating. Oh, the HCXD has pushed all these players away from the bomb site. But fortunately for them, I mean, replays the one controlling. It. He picks oh up first blood with it as well. Spacey's got good positioning. He's got kinetic armor to use. Everything going right, and here comes Saints along the flank. Man, the vision pulse gets popped. But how much can that can that help them here? Here comes Saints on the flank. He finds one. DT getting pushed in. The kinetic armor gets popped. One player left. It's gonna be Chino for DT. A one on two manageable position. One Takes on three. Two, oh, sorry. One on three. Now a one on two. He gets out live. I thought the the bomb icon. Hey, hey you're good. You're good. It's been, it's been a long day, guys. He's gonna wind up hitting this wall run, which might actually be the best chance he has in this round. See, one on the site now. A one on one. He's got overdrive as well. Really pop overdrive to follow this one up. That's what you want to see. Chino try to. Oh, you got to pop overdrive. He's got to pop overdrive. He's got to use it to go for the. the the defuse after this. What? The dart gets called in. No, you gotta run back to the site. You gotta go defuse. Go overdrive. Oh, god. oh my god! Run to the site, Chino. Go, go, go. What am I saying? No, no. Oh my god! Is he gonna get the defuse? Is he gonna get the defuse? Oh, I can't do this. No. <laughs> Shaking, you're crying, DT man. Come on, they found, they found new ways to lose. It's happened, <laughs> and they've done it. Jesus man, they found how. <laughs> I can't believe what just happened. The, how I you, thought he had it. I thought he had that too. That I was sick. He, that shoots, was so he sick. shoots the dart out shoots of the out sky. Shoots the dart. Oh my God. I can't even talk about the series, man. You talk about heartbreaking losses, man. That's got to be, <laughs> dude. You you're actually crying. I laughed. <laughs> I laughed so hard that. Oh, that was the second time in that series where there was a close defuse. Even back to the dart play with replays, right? Uh, throw up some highlights, please. I, I need to see that. Like, <laughs> wait, wait. Three we or got, four we more got the after action after report. After action report first. <sighs> Thirteen and six from replays. Jeez, man. Oh I'm in shock. I'm literally. I cannot wait. I don't even know what I'm. I don't even know what I'm, I can't wait for. I just right, can't wait for listen, the future. Listen, when we're talking about like best matches of the night, we've had three of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Here's the two piece of replays earlier on in the game. Oh my Lord! Chino had to have been 0.1 seconds away. Yeah, good. We're going right to this. Here okay, it is. here it is. So Let's see this again. Is in the air. Look at this. He shoots it out of the sky. But pops his overdrive. If he popped that maybe a quarter of a second earlier. Uh, just flies his way over to the bomb. Oh, oh my god. No. It looked like he had that. Way. No. It looked like he had that. Oh. <laughs> Gino, I am oh, so sorry. That just oh, happened to you, man. man. We still have a whole other match. We still have Envy versus CLG. Ladies and gentlemen, do I not go, go anywhere. I need to go regain composure for this next matchup. Tweet the stream out.
we're going to go do something 